nightcap. No, really, really. Stay for a nightcap. Stay for a nightcap! Hey, why don't you stay for a nightcap? No, really, really. Stay for a nightcap. Hey, why don't you stay for a nightcap? No, really, really. Stay for a nightcap. Stay for a nightcap! Hey, why don't you stay for a nightcap? No, really, really. Stay for a nightcap. Stay for a nightcap! Hey, why don't you stay for a nightcap? No, really, really! Stay for a nightcap! Stay for a nightcap! Hey, why don't you stay for a nightcap? No, really, really! Stay for a nightcap! Hey, why don't you stay for a nightcap? No, really, really. Stay for a nightcap. Stay for a nightcap! Hey, why don't you stay for a nightcap? No, really, really. Stay for a nightcap. What up, what up, what up? Another session of the nightcap. Will and Kills back again. What's really good? What's really good? You know, hope you're drinking. Maybe you done flamed up. I already got hope, my hope you're all in good health and good wealth. Hope you ain't beside yourself. You know what I'm saying? We'll put it <laughs> like that. Kills, what's going on, bro? Hey man. You know, first off, that's why I'm on I'm on here like smoking, man, because it's kind of like Usually I've been trying to cut down on you because but I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Hey man, I gotta give a big rest in peace to my man. My boy Twan. Twan died, man. Rest, you know what I'm saying? rest in peace, Twan, man. man I'm saying? Just on the motherfucking, just on here. You know what I'm saying? A couple weeks ago looking at us and shit, man. Shit crazy as hell. You know what I'm saying life short. Gotta appreciate it. Gotta appreciate gotta, it. Life short, gotta appreciate it, man. Rest in peace, Twan. Big blunts for your ass. You already know. All day long, definitely. You know, my man, I fucked with him. For sure. Fucked with us. He always fucked with us, man. He's been knowing us since we sixteen. Right, high school last year. You know what I'm saying? So shit. I always looked out too, man. What up to all y'all that's out there, man? Say what's up, man. Let us know who digging us and man, who watching us tonight, man. And ladies, I said, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Regular talk. Everybody that's out there that's enjoying it, let us know what's up. But we get going. Before we get started into the conversation, we still just building up right now. I we, we ain't even get set up all the way, man. I'm still trying to pour up some. <laughs> mm -mm. All right, man. So let's go into politics. Start it off real quick. Uh, I guess the biggest thing I've seen this week in politics, man, has been slow Joe. Slow, slow Joe. What you slow, mean by slow Joe? Slow Joe Biden, man. Like everything moving slow pace, man. They keep talking about slow Joe. It's just that we still been waiting and things been promised. I don't even want to stay on it too long, man, because this is like beating a dead horse. It's like skipping skipping rocks on the lake. It's only entertaining for so long. You know what I'm saying? Well, you don't get there with it. Maybe he'll watch this and see us talk some shit about him. He'll get a move on. Nah, man. <laughs> that shit pretty much a wrap. But I don't know, man. Uh, more other news. I don't know if you had much to say about Joe ass, but there's <coughs> a few other things that we could touch on before we move on. Man, fuck Joe. You know yeah, that's like, pretty much this it. shit is fucking crazy. Like, he... He's literally putting 
what if we what did we what did he what do we say that he was gonna do? Put right. that thing back together the mm -hmm. way it was pre-Trump, you know what I'm saying, which wasn't working for motherfuckers, right. but that's what the fuck he's trying to do. The same thing, same Slow taste, what I'm saying. Everything he supposed to already had the, the stimulus shit passed and all type of shit. Like he already supposed to had that passed already. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying he had a slower pace than Obama, he had a slower pace than Trump. Mm -hmm. I know motherfuckers ain't did that shit as far as like getting his agenda passed. Right, you know what I'm saying. Besides the COVID relief bill, what else is the agenda? What else is on the agenda that you're trying to get passed within the first hundred days when he has the House and the Senate? Man, who knows? You know man. I mean, like this is the time to get things done, and I don't feel like I don't feel like he's moving at the sense with a sense of urgency trying to get things done. When Republicans came in and ca came into the House, I mean, when Republicans came into power in 2016, throughout with the House and the Senate, it mm -hmm. was kind of like. They immediately went into action on elections got consequences on getting things done. Their agenda was they they mean the tax cuts. That's what they was on. Cutting Obama, they I mean, they was on it. Right. You know what I'm saying trying they, they like was they, they had an agenda and they, they immediately was putting it into action. And I think this agenda is sticking to their plan and everything. It's just that that shit don't include us. You know how it goes. Yeah, but we voted for him so because we thought that he was gonna do something. Right. What? I think people voted for him to make sure Trump got out of office, man. But how is your life? Better because Trump is out of office. I don't. That's what I'm trying to see. Like <coughs> Trump was a symptom, a symptom mm -hmm. of the overall problem, right? In this country, you know what I'm saying? As far as the vice, the vice, the way he was over, he's a symptom of the way motherfuckers in this country really feel. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And really, this just he just really brought brought he just really brought it out and masked right. a lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? So now people, now people in the United States. There's people of this country, I should say, okay. have to deal with this. You know what I'm saying? So getting back to Joe, if you belt probably so much better than Trump, then be better than Trump. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Since it was promised to the black people by Biden and them that once we got Trump out of office, then things was going to be better. Mm -hmm. This motherfucker came and delivered $2,000 that he promised. Hey, man. No $15 minimum wage is going to the COVID relief bill. You know what I'm saying? Like all the shit. Now he want to talk about the shit. I was only saying to say the Republicans when they came in, they said, fuck talking to the Democrats. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do what the fuck we want to do. That's how reconciliation came to being in the first place. I feel you, bro. It's just that I didn't expect now nothing. he want to work with the Republicans and shit. Get your goofy ass spot up. I ain't expect nothing different, and it's the same old same. So it's, it's disappointing. Moving right along, man. So another thing that was in the media this week. Um basically, um I didn't do that, but okay. What man? It was pretty much dead, man. That was just you. Like I was, I ain't got shit else to say to it. Like at a certain point, bro, it's just beating a dead horse. Them motherfuckers gonna do what they gonna do, and it ain't no way that we can help tell the people where to go at this point. You know what I'm saying? There's no elections up, and it's nothing like that. So it's just kind of like they just eye on what they doing, keep a people eye out for the stimulus, and then at that point, uh, because it's, it's just it's just negativity. Mm -hmm. So on to the next thing. They basically the thing that came out in the news this week. Um, is the media supposed to be moral? Like the news media supposed to be moral. Are they supposed to tell us the truth? Are they supposed to sell us stuff? And that's the question that's everybody that's out there watching too. Y'all chime in and answer. Should the news channels like CNN, Fox NBC, and all the other motherfuckers be held to a certain standard to report truth? Rather, should they just be have the freedom to be able to sell a product? I mean, I feel like the news gonna put whatever on. See, the media outlets, I, I should say, their job is to get viewers to watch their channel. Yeah. At the end of the day, so they're gonna put content that's more enticing. That's gonna that's that's gonna entice the viewers to do that. Exactly. You know what I'm saying Trump was their thing. Right. For these news outlets, so it became from us getting news to being entertained. Exactly. You know what I'm saying. So now I feel like news outlets are trying to. I, Okay, of course they got integrity. Of course, they support the news, mm -hmm. but it's it's an entertainment factor into that into that as well, right? Because everything they do is hyperbole. They over dramatize every damn thing. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, and you be like, what the fuck, y'all? But I notice a lot with the news, man. They report way more negative stuff than positive stuff. Because negative, because negative stuff is what brings the viewers in, and the people, and for whatever reason, people feed off negative energy. They feed My off man. that shit. You know what I'm saying? They want to see something negative because. Instead of positive, go right. ahead. Signed in from comment, my man Gold Morgan, my boy from college, Gold. They in the rating hey, business. When I right. tell you, when I tell you this is a good person, my dude, Gold Morgan is a good person. Anybody that know him will let you know that. If my book Gold, say you good, then you good. In my book. Let's go into Gold comment. Gold say they are in the rating business too. 
Exactly. You already know, bro. We definitely uh, they, we, they we right on point with you. Getting content to push ratings, to push, to push they, to push they ratings and shit. Right. So if they don't have good content, and if negativity push ratings, then what the hell are you gonna put on TV? You are negativity. Okay. We got another comment from a regular, Sir Brian. Sir Brian, what's really what up, good, bro, bro? Bro, appreciate you definitely for the sharing of the podcast, bro. We do truly appreciate you. What up, bro? We already know what's good with you, man. Hope you living right, bro. I right, X got a comment. Let's go. He said, he said you would think the media would be for the people and be moral. Mm -hmm. At one point, maybe they were exactly as they began to compete for ratings. It turned out and turned into something totally different. Yeah. Facts, bro. They, 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 everybody wants the juicy content. You got it. You on can, that shit. You can find probably in, uh, definitely newspapers. Mm -hmm. Newspapers. That's definitely one thing for sure. And then Sir Brian the got another comment. He say drama sales. Drama. Yeah, man. To add in even more deeper, bro. I see it, man. It's like the integrity of it at a certain point when something is like on the line, like the whole uh, juicy smooth a shit. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like that was so Call much juicy for a reason. It Fuck. was so much, and you seen Don Lemon go in on him or whatever. But you know, it's already a play on that because Don Lemon feel he's some type of way because he. Represent yeah, the community. Damn the crying you know, and shit. Shit. He was damn the crying. Right. But I'm saying he represent the community. So it's always some drama shit. Well, this just how they always, and I like Don Lemon. Don't get me wrong. I like Anderson Cooper. Don't get me wrong. But they always put them forth. And you know it's the reason why. Yeah. You know it's the reason I mean, why. You know what I'm saying? I, I know I know the reason, but shit. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> y'all gonna give me a trouble with this motherfucker. <laughs> For real talk. All right, right. Uh, but it's the truth, though, man. It's true. Shout out to X with the comment. X man, you got mogul fashion. Y'all please go check them out, man. Bro got some shit out there, some hot shit. Hot, hot, hot. Yeah, man. But I don't know, man. It's just that they all act like they got the best news. They the most honest. Mm -hmm. Everybody else lying. And Everybody never, is extra honest. And they never transparent. And they never come out and tell the truth about themselves, man. Like the fuck out of hit the fan. It just irritates me because they, you know what I'm saying? It's like all these new. Yes, news is important, but it's like every reporter is is is, is trying to get is trying to like pin something on somebody. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? How you gonna throw stones at a glass house? Right. With a rock? I mean, that's how that's how I be looking at it. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, God damn. <laughs> it's too much. Man. You motherfuckers all got skeletons in the closet, but y'all always out here just trying to out expose right. everybody else. You know what I'm like saying? Fox had so many guys. Crazy. That's shit so crazy. Many, Fox had so many bogus niggas higher up. Mm -hmm. They was getting sued by their own people losing big money mm -hmm. and shit. And it's crazy that they still be able to stay around and don't fold. The whole company still be able to move around and manage the, the other outlets don't fall out from uh, sponsorships with them because they already know that they got a fan base and that fan base ain't going to move because whatever they do, they feel in line with them because they hold a certain worldview, the same that's, worldview. That's you know the thing. That answers your shit. question, bro. It ain't, nothing, it ain't about morality no more. Right. <laughs> it ain't nothing, it ain't, it's not about that. It's about putting stuff on TV so we can grab viewers and monetize their attention. X say if you ever seen Nightcrawler, that was a prime example about news outlets. I don't think I've seen it, bro. I'm gonna have to check that shit out. I've definitely seen it was, with something while that was, I was, that was you should watch. Yeah, Nightcrawler. That was I think that was a movie with uh what's the what's the boy that played in ah wasn't that he played in Spider-Man, he was the villain in Spider-Man, whatever. Really. I don't care. The uh, last Spider-Man, Jake got Jake Gil Gallery Gil Hall. Gil yeah. Hall. Yeah, I can't even say his goddamn Gil name. You about to say Jake Galanera or some shit? You no, think about peppers or some shit, nigga. Jake Whatever. Gyllenhaal, yeah, him. Notebook ain't when he in notebook some shit. Maybe I'm off. I don't know. I ain't never seen the notebook. I, I know he in a damn movie, right? All right, man. So, um, uh, we can move on for politics unless y'all got some shit out there that y'all want to talk about. That y'all seen that we ain't, uh, we ain't talking about that for sure. X, y'all see the X man with the plug. He giving um our viewers thirty percent off. It oh, ain't, it ain't just our viewers, but we just gonna take that line like that. Our viewers get thirty percent off at Mogul. All right, go holler at uh, my man X. X, post the um the full link up there, bro. Oh, you gotta write that cool. I see it, man. I'm gonna say shameless plug. <laughs> ain't, ain't no shame in it, bro. That's what we here for. I want you to know, bro. X, tell everybody too and your other bros. That's what our nightcap is about, man. We want everybody to come in, fun. drop their info, what they doing, what they got going on, and we just sharing, bro. This free advertisement, man. We up drinking late, and we just want the community to be able to share. You know what I'm saying? We got Android. We ain't no clubhouse. All right. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> we stop playing. All right, so let's move on, Kills. Let's get out of politics, bro. All okay. right. And do, 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 what we got? What's up next? So once I get this comment off politics, it's going to pop off back up. I had something that I wanted to dive into, bro. Um, Talk to me. 
this is a it's a cool conversation it's standard versus types so your standard versus your type right okay like you know people be in relationships and then just in things and jobs in different areas you all have a standard right that's like i ain't going below this but your type might vary between things you know what i'm saying like i'm gonna have a job right i'm gonna be employed and i work hard on the job okay but it my standard is i ain't working fast food that's just my standard like i can't work fast food you know what i'm saying it's more of a preference than anything but to me that's just like where i stand at the line at like i can't do the fast food and no knock to nobody working the fast food i could do sales all the time that's my type mm -hmm. sales is my my preference really my type but i even think more of relationships like girls be saying i can't deal with this type of guy i can't date this type of girl or this type of guy or, and vice versa nobody even what your choice is okay people are so picky and they out there saying it but i really think more of your standard where things should lie and then the type that might vary a little bit more you know what i'm saying i don't know maybe you can speak to it maybe y'all maybe easy. you could think different about it it's kind of easy to conflate those though okay like standard yeah as far as an relationship test and relationship wise should operate on the standard yeah i'm saying your standard should your standard should come from within right so you know your saying? standard for a relationship does that depend on what type of relationship you have let me ask you this then like is your standard with a female that you got to be exclusive with her if, if she came to you like okay i want to be with you but you don't have to just be with me is you cool with that I want to be with you, but you don't have to just be. right. She telling you you could play, but she want to mess with you. But you can do you. You can probably you can have to just be open. All right, of course, I'm cool. You cool with that, right? Of course. All right, but what if she say that she want to do that? But I just gotta be with her, right? No, nah, no. Nah. Y'all both open then at this point. Because that's exactly what it's gonna be. Right. Yeah, I, I, I'm like that. All right, that's cool, the kind cool. of relationship okay. that we decided we want to have. I'm kind of losing it, but I kind of want to catch you. I want to put you on something what I'm talking about and try to like build off of it from that. We got a couple comments <laughs> real quick. What up, Mac? Me and Mac go back to 2K. Real shit. What up, boy? He said, well, mm -hmm. 2K leads for sure. Hey man, just getting it in, bro. Podcasting it, bro. What you got, go? He said, Oh, she playing too. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> he said, Oh, she playing though. She playing too, though. Yeah, you right. You right, go. It'd be like that. So now nah, I'm just thinking more of the thing like. You might have something that you like okay this is my my type or well, maybe this is your standard that you stick to but then like you vary in certain things like okay i don't know i ain't i don't know your type i ain't been asked you that type shit. i ain't interested in you like that nigga. but ultimately <laughs> you have a tight preference with women yeah you do yeah i got a type but that don't mean they meet my standards okay so okay <laughs> so let's break it down like that okay so that's kind of what that's kind of where, where, where i feel you coming okay you coming okay. from let's go this. in on there y'all y'all help me out in here too y'all help me find my idea too you know that's where that's where i feel like you're coming from with this you know what hey go say so yeah if we laying the ground rules up front and say and i say i'm good hey a lot of guys will take that you know mm -hmm. and that's why women are able to do their thing on the low type thing like that way better than men because like i peep game and i was listening to um uh, my man, uh, what's my man name from um, Ghetto Boys? Willie from Ghetto Boys. Oh, Willie D. Willie D. So Willie D was talking about um, women, they don't have to have shit so much. Like, they don't fiend for shit like men do. Like, men, we fiend for something. When we get something, we got to have it on the regular. Like, we got to have it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it got to be on call. We got to be able to be on draw. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But a woman can have something, and she can have it Monday, and then, like, wait motherfucking three months and then have it again no it depends and be on fine. what that what, but i'm just talking, it is for, for general standard though bro fiending, fiending is human nature i know fiending is human nature but how we go about fiending i noticed what willie d was saying this that it was real game mm -hmm. so you will find a lot of niggas that'll be side niggas to multiple females okay right yeah. because those females are touching out every now and then as long as dude is available to give her what she need at that time it feels you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying but on the vice end, a lot of niggas don't get that because a lot of guys be still caught up in their feelings. You see what I'm saying? On the, on the, vice, on the, on the, on the vice versa end. Mm -mm. Like, so you that's why you get a lot of cats that'll be one dude with multiple women because he get the game. Mm -hmm. And uh the seven out of ten of the niggas ain't getting it. And the three niggas, they got it. And so they taking up for the rest of the seven niggas. And the motherfuckers don't understand what the game go wrong at. 
I don't know, man. I grew up um with some people of some alternative lifestyles when I was growing up. My mm-hmm. mama and my aunties and all mm-hmm. them. Um, you know, they was of the uh, alphabet community. You know, so <laughs> make it mm-hmm. make it nice like that. But they gave me the game from the other side too. You know what I'm saying? Totally. And a woman talking to a woman about some things. I don't know, man. It was it was pretty deep. But X had a comment in. We need a call in line. You know what, go? I'm gonna hook up something real quick. I'm gonna hook it up real quick. I'm gonna look at these comments. I'm gonna hook up something where people can call in, man, real quick. Uh, X guy one, he said everyone has a type slash preference, but you always gotta. I can't wait. He said, but you always gotta qualify for what you think. But you don't qualify for what you think you deserve. Oh yeah, Kevin Cam- Samuels. Voice. Oh, we ain't even get on Kevin Samuels yet, bro. But that's, that's what I was. That's what, that's kind of what I was saying. Like that's oh, that's the way shit. this conversation is going. That's what I was way this conversation is going. Okay. Because you know what I'm saying, my my type okay. might not meet your standard. It, now it's. The type okay. don't meet your standards. I'm like, damn, she found a motherfucker. She everything I need right, right here. She, like, if I'm just looking at her, mm-hmm. yeah, that's my type. I fucks with her. Okay. But then she, and then you start talking to her and shit, and then she just like, oh fuck, <laughs> I ain't finna do shit but fuck but up. That's that's going off the and looks that's though. It. That's I'm, it. But I'm saying that's going off the looks, and I think right. It's I, the, the looks. The looks describe your type because your your type is your type. For sure. You know what I'm saying? And your standards is what they do. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, but I, I've heard people say this, and y'all can chime into this and act and answer this for us too. I heard somebody say, if you don't have a type, you don't have any standards. Do you agree with that? The fuck? Why? Who said that shit? I seen it, man. Do you agree with it? Man? No, I don't agree with that. It's a shit. thought. No matter where it came from, it's a thought. You know how I am. Shut up. But <laughs> <laughs> I, like, no, I don't. I don't agree with that. I'm so, like. So, it's too boxy. You trying to put put you can't put that kind of cap that kind of shit in the box. You know what I'm saying that shit is what it is. How the hell are you gonna sit there and say that somebody don't have standards if they don't have a type? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like <laughs> my type is whatever the fuck I. I mean, they might even they might not even know what their type is yet. They just know. They just know when they fuck when they fuck with them. Okay, like you can't really sit, sit there and say because sometimes it might take. Somebody had damn in a lifetime to find out what they type is. You know what I'm saying? But that's them getting to know their sales more than finding out what they type. I mean, that's a whole nother thing, but right. it takes time. They want, you can conflate them, but they can be separate too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, right, I agree right, with that right. comment. But I, do you have anything? You got any, got any certain types? Like, you got, is it a weight issue with you? Is it a what? Is weight an issue with you? Do, do, weight, do you matter with weight? Can your girl gain well, weight? Can she, she lose I weight? See what she I'm of just course, asking, of man. Of course not. You know what I'm saying? My, I, I, I like my my type is my my, my chocolate BBW. That's that's my type. <laughs> Cats like, like a thick boy. You know what I'm saying? That's what you're trying to get me to say. Mm. So I got you. <laughs> I'm gonna try to get you to say that. You what just up? being honest, my nigga. I mean, of course, that's what we do. But. I've met a lot that don't meet my standards. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh my God, this, this one's fucking retarded. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I can't, I want you to be standards. I want you to be smart. I want you to be all type of, you know what I'm saying? Like, all kind of other shit. <laughs> hey, hey, so, no, 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 no. so we got a couple comments. We got to chime in too. Goat, I need you to uh, break down what you said, bro, because uh, I'm a little off of it. What did he say? He said he, say he didn't agree with something. Let us know what you didn't agree with. Uh, what did it say? It say, uh, if you don't stand for something, you fall for anything. I do agree with that. I That's your standards. That. You I don't do. gotta have a, that. Don't got shit to do with the type. Well, it's this little it's a little gray area with this word. We gonna have to map it out a little bit better. I said, okay. Joy, do you agree with Kells with the BBW statement, or what statement do you agree with Kells with? We trying to figure it out. I I'm just fucking with you. What up? Oh, what's up? Oh, wow. We. This is a long Standard lost. includes deal, deal right, right. We, we, you know, what I'm saying this is a long lost person we haven't heard from. Oh, high school chum. I'm a little tipsy. Can you read it, bro? So Jay, so Jay, what's happening, Sandra? How you feeling, Miss Sandra? <laughs> uh, her comment is standard includes deal breakers, like what, like what you do, like what you won't do or accept. Type can be physical. Usually, when you're younger, it's only it's only looks. As you gain experience, your type de- your type develops. Types can include what you love. Standards what standards what you can't deal with. It's a balance. That's what I was exactly. That's why we here. 
She's smart as fuck. Right. We appreciate but, it. That's why the community's open, you know man. Saying? Fuck with that, man. Like, real talk. Just an agreement. And the whole Harley agreement. You know what I'm saying? My type. You know what I'm hey, saying? Hey, hey, hey. Don't meet my standards. You know what I'm saying? I mean. So I just edited the um the main post that um that this is under. If it's if y'all on my page or whatever, um, you basically click on it if y'all want to come on. So it's something like call in. You don't have to put your face on if you just want to come in. Just make sure you got some headphones on, and uh, we can bring y'all right into the conversation. It's always love. So, man, that was a good one, man. I like that one. <laughs> I'm glad we <laughs> saved that one from last week, man. Yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, like yeah, real man. talk. I mean, but. Like 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 we saying in the comments, it's, it's a tricky it's a tricky statement. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of, and you can so you, you ever had a deal breaker because something wasn't your type with somebody, or was you not somebody type? Like after you thought everything was going good, and then it was like, damn, because I'm not your type like that. I was your type all this other way, but now I'm not. You know what I'm saying? You ever got to that moment? Was it a deal breaker something like that? Not, uh, I don't say well. I guess honestly, I say yeah, but it's not the way that she was kind of describing it. It's like because I feel like just based off the context of how we've been talking, if I ain't your type, then why the fuck was we talking in the first place? You know what I'm saying? Right. On th on that level, she didn't even got to another level. If I ain't your type, so stand so your standards were not met when mm -hmm. you when 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 uh when you talk to me. Right. And those were the deal breakers. Okay. Or not. So, so X had an interest comment. He said, I think in dating, when we think of types, we're typically talking about appearance. Mm -hmm. you know, like long hair, thick red bones. Mm -hmm. That would be my type. Every, every, in in agree, in wholeheartedly in agreement. You already know what it is. But chicks, but a lot of times, let me say chicks, but women have a, a type and a preference about income, jobs, looks, and yeah, a whole see, bunch that, of and, and that's what, before we right. went to X comment and shit. Uh, or even being sensitive and in touch with your feminine side. and yo. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> before we, I'm glad you fucking segue into that, bro. Right. Before we got to X comment, before we got to X comment and shit, I was just finna say that I was trying to answer your question. I didn't want the comments. I just think that I wasn't answering the question. As far as like her standard, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, was the fact that I didn't communicate as well. I didn't communicate like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't have the emotional support that she needs. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? She has a standard for shit like this. Right. And on top of that, I ain't had no cop. So <laughs> I think Sandra just hit it in on bed. Read it out because I can't, I'm a little off. What'd what she say? Uh, standards is your process of elong elongation. Type type is what attracted you, attracted you to that person. Exactly. That can be anything. Looks, personality, deal breakings, deal breaking. Standards help you sort your, sort your yes or no. Yeah. You hit it on the air. We appreciate you. That's what we, man. That's what Night Cap here for, man. That's what the Night Cap is for. These deep that's conversations. What the fuck we, do. we had a moment. That'll be the amen moment. Like we passed the offering around right now at that point. Hey, amen. I ain't gonna put the I ain't gonna put the hey, cash app on it. The cash app will go to Sandra. <laughs> Get your coming ass. in preaching on the on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on what's her name? Hey man, she deep. She a deep thinker. I fuck. She with always her. been since she was like fifteen and shit. I fucks with. Her. So let's go. Let's go on. Um, let's go deeper, man. Let's go deeper. Let me see y'all. I'm pulling up. trying to go, bro. I'm producing, man. <laughs> That's what I do, man. I'm, I'm doing the producing, man. Uh, so we're going to go into... Um, da, 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 da. Let's go to the mental health check-in this week. Y'all help us out while we, while we deep in this. You know what I'm saying? I've been tired of the monotonous pace. So tell me, what do y'all do to get out of the regular dead routine? Right? That's when I met you. Like I, I was I saying since she was 15, that's when I met you. We used to have crazy conversations. So I know. All right. So what do you do to get out of the rut of the regular monotonous routine, y'all? Tell me. What do you do? Oh shit. What do you do to, to spice things up, nigga? I uh, just in life try to figure out how to get some goddamn money. <laughs> so, like, yeah, right. My my thing is to, to, honestly, what I do to get out of a, a monotonous routine, uh it's try to just try to learn something new, right? Like real talk, just try to learn something new. Anything that's gonna put anything you learn new that's gonna that's gonna self improve you, or offers you self improvement and put and like push you on a pathway to a just ha better mental health. Okay, it's always something I'm down for. So right. when I'm in a rut, I try to learn something new, 
and it's usually trying to learn something new about how to get some money. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. One of mine I like to do, I like the hoop, man. I got the hoop this weekend. I had a face mask on and everything, but I like the hoop, man. I, I like to talk shit. How the fuck you gonna fall on that damn face mask? I don't, well, man. But okay. It's, it's <laughs> make it happen. I don't be running that hard no more anyway. I smoke too much, so shit. I can't be running fast and shit. Nigga might die too old. And then we ain't getting paid to play either, so I, I ain't trying to cut you off. Talk, talk to me. What you talking about? But no, nah, that's, that's always fun to me, working out, Um, you know, just having some type of like relaxation. The games ain't so much relaxation no more. Watching the sports no more because we bet on them so much. It ain't relaxing. That's been pissing me off, right? Because you get mad at that's, the motherfucking that, game. You know what's shit. fucking? That's fucking with my goddamn mental health right now. Because <laughs> you got money on just it, bro. fucking irritant, right? But I think everybody betting on sports right now. But I think everybody is dealing with a lot. COVID. That's really fucking with my mental health. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. <laughs> that's that's losing money. I think we all go through some shit when we losing money. Jesus so Christ. I don't know if y'all can chime in some more. Let us know, man. What do y'all do to help ease your mind in these times? You know, is it? I mean, sometimes motherfuckers. Just, sometimes motherfuckers just want to lay on the damn couch. Mm-hmm. Laying, I mean, just and kind of clear their damn mind. I don't know how to meditate. Mm-hmm. I I need to learn how. Yeah. But you know what? And you are gonna say I'll be lame and shit. But what's the name is real me. One division help me out. I be I be anticipating one division. That that gets me to the next Friday. What? WandaVision gets me to the next Friday. I'm a big ass nerd at heart. I don't even give a fuck. But it's hey, this is the popular, the most popular show right now. All right. So, Snowfall finna get me right. next Friday. Hey, fuck? Snowfall is shit too. But I like the Beyonce watch that shit. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's uh hey, actually on point, bro. Therapy sessions is real. I reached out to my former um uh therapist slash counselor, uh amazing lady, man. I still keep in touch with her. She my G, she got me through high school. The people don't understand what all the shit I was going through through high school. I was so fucking cool. It was due to this lady. Why I had a job in high school. Yeah, but sometimes, sometimes, you know sometimes you don't want to talk, bro. Right. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you don't, but, you don't feel like you want to talk to somebody. You right. want you want to sit, sit your ass in the corner somewhere and right. figure that shit out. But like Everybody XA, handled it different, different ways, bro. And that's true. But like X say, this is just one outlet. No one's saying that you all got to turn to this outlet. But just the experience from the outlet that he's saying is what I'm speaking to. Like I say, bro. My counselors that I didn't had in my life, like you know what I'm saying, like from early on age was probably like six, seven, okay. all the way up to like 18, right? Mm-hmm. Like I was in counseling all through that time. And so it allows me to be open, allows me to be confident in myself. Certain things I didn't stern I, that um that I have a that I had problems with confidence wise, I was able to build through and get it, get gave through. You, gave you affirmation to go ahead and make that leap. And then these people that they induced me to. Also put me into opportunities. Like I read uh, Reverend Tony that's out in Roseland. I don't know if y'all that's on is ever familiar with Reverend Tony in the Roseland Community Church. Like I met them when I was like 14, 15. And so mm-hmm. I worked with them over the summer. I had a summer job. And then that led into me having a job at the thrift store. So like it just shows you how those things branch out. And then I have my own church family where I went to and grew up at. You know what I'm saying? So like in communities, environments, people, other people to talk to, other people to be around, other people where you struggling at that might not have that opportunity that you, you know what I'm saying? You might have not had an opportunity that they have, but they got something for you. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? And they looking to be able to be in that position because the universe, God, the higher power, whatever the case that you might believe in, mm. put that there so you can journey that way. Some of us want to wander by ourselves. Some of us want to do things that way. And some of us find, you know, light at the end of the tunnel going through that darkness by themselves. But we learn from the experience of others. I teach my kids all the times. So don't be a dummy. If somebody else invested into this company and this company was shit and we told them before don't invest in the company and they took a chance and did it, don't be that motherfucker. If you want to, it's all on you. Yeah. But don't be that motherfucker if you don't have to. So that's ultimately what I think what I was talking to about X and talk about us going into counseling and seeing a psychiatrist and going through therapy is real, especially for families. I, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. I'm speaking. Okay. I'm speaking from a point. And maybe I can get better, right? Okay. Well, you can be in that dark tunnel by yourself. Yeah, you could. And see other people's problems, and, and I'm saying, and kind of that kind of heals your hell heals you too. Mm-hmm. I'm saying, like speaking from a point who deals with problems about it, who deals with shit on it. I'm saying, I don't take the counseling route. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, speak from a motherfucker who deals with shit on their own. You right. know what I'm saying, when you're in that tunnel by yourself, mm-hmm. when you just need to be on your own, and people just don't understand, like it's you're not fucking. Pushing people away, you just you need to do you right quick. You know what I'm saying? It's you 
you you it's for your mental health, right? You know what I'm saying you need to do you, and people don't understand that shit, right? You know what I'm saying, like, but that's 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 some things that's something that you're talking about right there that a lot of people would trade their life for to have somebody to reach out for them to reach out for them and not to cut you off. I Maybe just you wanna... don't need nobody to reach out for you. Well, hold on, what I'm saying is that the fact that somebody cares enough to reach out for you, like when someone doesn't have that, it's a problem. And since you have it, you probably don't understand what it's like to not have that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, people that's on suicide watching things like that. You know what I'm saying? It's just real shit. You know, people that's ever contemplated that, you know. Nigga, you, you can be on suicide watch with motherfuckers that love you all around exactly, you. Exactly. You can. Nice. But what we're saying is that it's different avenues. So if something, you know, is bothering you, you can try something different. It's always open. We all can grow. You know what I'm saying? But this is the main thing. And this is ultimate to it all. I was always taught this growing up. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Don't mean nothing wrong with that horse. Don't mean nothing wrong with the water. But hey, mm -hmm. this is where the water's at. If that horse want to go off and find some water some elsewhere, that's up to the horse. But at least you did what you were supposed to do from the heart. You can't knock a person from being good. Of course not. And that's the ultimate. Uh, we got some comments. <coughs> what you say? Like telling yourself you don't have to meet the quota. Being kind to myself. Friends can be therapy. Support to us. So uh, support. A support. Support a uh, support. Support a support, yeah. Can I come over? I'm sad and need to get out of this house, like hanging out with intention. Hey, that's what's up. Hey, Kales is always yelling. You should know that about Kelvin. Yeah. You got the Napoleon complex. No, that's not the point at all. <laughs> it's just damn big, I guess. If you know, well, you know me, you know I ain't always yelling. <laughs> Feel you, sir, Brian. Okay. What? Okay. Let me see what Kale. Oh, let me see what's that. Oh, let me see what X Tom about man. Let me let me read this comment. Kale's, listen, brother. I get where you are. I get where you are mentally right now. I've been there. Oh shit. He on some real shit right now. Okay. I'm here to tell you that as a as a cliche as saying everybody needs somebody. It is true. Uh, there will come a day where where there will come a day where that dark tunnel will be too deep to pull yourself out of. You need to. You'll need some assistance. Facts. Huh. I've had moments, man. You know, when I went through shit, uh, with my wife getting uh cancer and shit. That's the that's probably the one time that all y'all can say out of all the guys to say, man, we'll fucking lost it. Bro, that's the really shit I've seen ever ever. You know what I'm saying? You already know mm -hmm. how I feel about you when you did when you bro. Right. So you respect, bro. Respect. So bro. you already know, like when we the really shit I fucking ever probably saw. Real talk. I admire you for that. I love you for that. I'm trying to read this shit, bro. I'm trying to get that. <sighs> But yeah, X, you right, man. That shit real, bro. Yeah, I, 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 I hear you, X. <coughs> I hear you, bro. Like <coughs> sometimes, <coughs> let me just hop with this. <coughs> I hear you, bro. It's like, cause, like you, you already know we've been in some dark ass tunnels, bro. Some dark, dark tunnels. Real dark tunnels. Hey, that's I just another. feel like at the end of the day. You only got you. So, and not to make this superficial or anything, not to take it far fetched, but look at our support group that we got from our community from when we went to high school with. Yeah. Like, man, we put some shit out that motherfucker's gonna support, or if a motherfucker fucked up, motherfucker's gonna jump and beat up, and then they gonna be a word said. You know what I'm saying? So, like, we're fortunate. A we lot are, of people don't have that shit, bro. We are fortunate. We are, we are fortunate. You know what I'm saying? But I always think that if everything else is gone, you just got you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, what do you do? Hey, D Maybe, say, I don't know why I think like that. Hey, D say, hey, Darwin say stop coughing. That's that good shit, Darwin. That's why you coughing. Bro. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's good shit. <laughs> you already I know what it you. is. But you don't want you don't want to mess up the viewers, bro. So if you cough, turn your head, all right? Put your put your elbow up. That's how you both are cough, bro. Darwin be all right, man. <laughs> What the, what's the comment? For you to have the same friends most of your life, you know what it's like to have some. Yeah. But facts. Mm hmm For sure, for sure. That's the idea, man. Motherfuckers brothers. Like, like, I don't have friends. I hate when people, like, say that shit. Like, the motherfuckers I consider my friends, that's my family. Like, yeah, but that's I don't, my friends would be, like, my coworkers and people I'm cool with. The people I'm cool with at work. Well, people I know from shit like that, that's my friends. Mm -hmm. And the other people I know from work, they associates because I, I know them and I associate with them. 
But anybody I've been down with for as long as we've been down and shit like that, bro, that's family, bro. If key, I could key word being time, it takes time right. to get time. If, you know what I'm saying? And that's yeah, it's not so much time. Sometimes it's experience too, like different experiences time, you go through. Experiences. I mean, time with me. Mm-hmm. I, I, like I'm, right. I'm not just meeting the first motherfucker I see, and all of a sudden we brothers get the fuck out of here. Like we was talking. No, no, it ain't like that. But it's like, like how we was talking about like with, with Draper. Like we don't call his mama Miss Draper. We mm-hmm. call her Auntie Joyce. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like it's just certain things. Like my guy Tori and his mama is mom. I don't fucking call. I me mean, excuse my language. I don't. I don't call her Miss Thurman. That's my mom. You know what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. mom. Like I treat her just like that. And so that's what I mean. Ex mama. It's mama. Mama Hodge. Like. It is what it is. Like, it ain't no questions about it. If somebody fuck with her, I'm going to fuck them up just like as much as my mama. So that's what I mean. Like, it's family. We got some comments coming up. Come on, man. You know, I be, I can't do it, man. I think when you you're know, so can I smoke with you? Oh, so, oh, he want to partake. <laughs> Get the, all right. I think, uh, I say, I think we're so used to not having anyone, so it becomes a bit of a defense mechanism. You might be right, bro. We can get that. I don't need that. No, I don't need nobody mindset. Worked for me. Works for me so far. Uh, there's some. There's people out here willing to stand in your corner. We have to give them the opportunity. Really, shit probably heard today. Mm-hmm. Sandra got a comment too. You can take Sandra comment too. Smoking on some real shit. When you go through some shit with pe- with people. You think that everyday shit ain't important. I'm sad. Hold on. Let me read this shit again. On some real shit, when you go through some shit with people, you think the everyday stuff ain't important. I'm sad. I'm sad. Shit is important too. I'm struck. I'm struggling. Stu- I'm I'm struggling. Stuff is important. You think we almost died together? How dare I call? I call because I'm sad. Yeah, you struggling all right reading that. Nigga. I was. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fucking around, but nah, you real though. Hooked on phonics type shit. But that's how I be though, like, cause our peoples, if you family, you both hold each other down. That's mm-hmm. what I was brought up on. That's what I know. So that's all I know. We go through shit. We call each other, up. yo, bro, what you on? Let's slide up and, you know, link through. Mm-hmm. But you still got to find some things. I don't know whatever your source is and whatever your key, your chi or whatever you may call it, your God or whatever. You got to be able to learn something definitely in these times. This shit can heck it. Of course. Of course. So yeah, Larry, what up, bro? Oh, what up, Larry? How you feeling, bro? Larry, legend. Say my bros could convo. We all need that support system. Some people have to allow people to help them and not shut themselves in. That shit dangerous. You facts, bro. Thinking yeah. like, and that's another thing. Not to go on, th- on you, bro, but just to keep it real with you. I'm getting thinking. Ba- I'm getting better. Thinking, with it, bro. thinking that you can handle this shit on your own is what got some motherfuckers over the edge. Certain motherfuckers was doing that shit by themselves, thought they could do it by themselves, and got trapped into it. And so when it all hit the fan, they figured they couldn't, nobody help them, and they was all by themselves. So that's the shit, bro. Like, that type of behavior makes me reach out even more. So you'll be mad at a motherfucker like me, because I ain't about to let you take yourself out. I ain't going to let you have a moment. You know what I'm saying? Because that's how people think. You know what I'm saying? And that's a whole other conversation, too, because a motherfucker can get to those dark moments. It's like, Man, what type of shit you on? Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then now you I gotta check on you even more because I don't understand what type of shit you on. Like, I get what a motherfucker be saying, but at the same time, bro, you care about your loved one so much that you're gonna go, you're gonna fight them over the shit. That's real shit. True, but at the end of the day, that person's gotta deal with it on his own. Right. So that's all I'm saying, bro. And I think you gotta go through that battle so both sides can see that. I love you this much, so I'm gonna fight for that. And then you going to fight so much to fight on your own. And we both got to come to a term just to agree to disagree and move forward. But, you know, you know, if you want to go down that path, that's on you. And then I got to be cool with that. I think we've all had somebody that took themselves out. You know what I'm saying? Or somebody we didn't knew or connected to that took themselves out. Mm-hmm. And some people might feel that they ain't had no way out. I can't really speak to it because I ain't never went over the edge. I think we've all been there and contemplated the thought of what would the world be like without us. But I haven't said that I contemplated suicide. I can't say that. I've thought about on some what's that? The Christmas shit? What's the movie Christmas shit? Wonderful Life type the shit. Wonderful Life type shit. Like if I wasn't around, if I never existed type shit or if I died type shit. Yeah. Like that. But I haven't contemplated and taking myself out, man. Hmm. Let's see. He said, uh, he said, I wrote it now. I said it. Sorry. I should have used punctuation. I'm using two hands now. So 
<laughs> I mean, it's it's cool. I mean, hey, X, I, I, did, about, I, did the, I did I did the best I could. X man, I got the link out there, bro. It's if you back out, y'all gotta stop trying. <laughs> I did whatever, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That's where everybody wants to come in, man. Tipsy and shit. It's the nightcap, baby. Oh gee, let's do it. It's all good. We're gonna make it happen. I told y'all the link is up there. Y'all can join and come on and talk. You ain't gotta put your face on. So if you already laid down and got your hair wrap on, <laughs> you got your motherfucking makeup off and shit, your face off for the day. Man, stop. You know what I'm saying? You got your girdle on and shit. You can still come on just talk and shit. You know what I'm saying? It's all good. That's what the fuck we do, man. You know what I'm saying? That's open conversation, open everything. We just talk to and, us. And to kill, talk start to you, yelling and shit. I'll be trying not to yell. This is the voice that I really be trying to talk at. I mean, motherfuckers, no, motherfuckers tell me to project my voice. Hey, look, you say it wasn't your fault. I understood it. They ass was just drunk. Hey, that's facts, bro. I be having to sit here for like an hour before I drive home and shit. <laughs> you know, motherfucker, like, I'm just be drinking shit. I mean, I really thought I was tweaking, though. It's far as fuck away. Like, they don't let a monitor that we look at. <laughs> we looking at a small ass computer screen and this fucking monitor that's far as fuck away. All right. Y'all not here. X, you not here, bro. Hey. It's hey, be safe out, over there too, X man. There's people out here think I can't read. I know. <laughs> hey, it is what it is, man. We tell motherfuckers to come on and talk to us, so it is what it is. I know I'm cussing like crazy. Sorry, mom, if you watching. Uh, yeah, man. So is we are we switching over to sports now, man? I mean, so, are we like, here. We still here. Y'all got anything else y'all want to add in? Let me know. I'm feeling our vibe right now. Real talk. Right, the vibe is flowing, man. I'm I'm good with it, man. I don't know. I don't I don't know anything else to really carry on. I don't want to just babble. You know what I'm saying? Like I told you what my thing is. I just when it comes to these times, you know, I reach out to my people if I need my people, but I find ways, like you said, to get things done. If I'm gonna try to make another new avenue to make some money, mm -hmm. y'all check out against uh against the odds coming soon. Betting podcast coming soon. We ain't gonna stop, we keeping it moving. But um, I find things like that, man. You know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I try to run with it to the point where I'm going to keep myself busy and keep myself occupied. You know, I don't need some real shit. We can dive deep on this. When you come from situations in your life that's come before you, that you kind of are uh, burdened with certain things. So like addictive personalities. Okay. Like my my parents and some of the people before me, they had addictions, like real hard addictions. Okay. And it's, and it, you know, trigger their life to go certain ways. And so as I got older, I understand some of those addictive personalities, the addictive personalities, like a, it's like a trait. It's like it's passed down mm -hmm. and you do get it. You find yourself in it. So like I found myself to be addicted to good things. And so things that I found that's like positive for me that brought me some type of prosperity and some type of productivity in my life to okay. be addicted to that. And I think that is the ticket when you got people that's coming from generations of people that's before them, that's been, you know, modeling addiction in front of them. You know what I'm saying? That's habits that you pick up. Your kids going to do what you do. They're not going to do what you say. do. And you mm -hmm. are the product of your parents. So you just got to be, well, not so much your parents, but the people that brought you up, your guardians. Right? You are. You look at how you move and you look at how your parents move. I disagree with you. Right. You're going to see a lot of similarities. I ain't going to argue with motherfucker about that at all. <laughs> I already know what it is. Because it's, it's habits, bro. We learn it. So you got to learn to break those things. Now, you might get to a point where you learn to break it. Or even certain cases, like, you act out against it. Like, a lot of us, we've been in a position where, like, our fathers wasn't around. So we go gun ho to be the best daddies ever. We yeah, make sure of fact that we the best daddies ever. Because we was the sacrificial lambs of that situation. Try to break that cycle. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of like, sometimes. It, like, it ain't even got to be like that. Right. But circumstances are circumstances. I mean, I know. You know I'm saying? It's certain circumstances that constitute father might not be in the kid. I mean, you right. never know what the circumstances is. But you got most times it's most times it's it, bullshit. It, there's no circumstance that that that's that gives you okay not to fight for me. Now, if she fought your ass that much that it kept you away from me, no, nah, or he had fought you that much to keep you away from me back, then okay. But nah, motherfucker, you gotta fight for me. And if you don't fight for me, I don't fuck with you. I don't give a fuck at what age. I'm cool. I hear what you're saying. Right. If you right. don't fight for me, fuck you. That's it. You ain't my home team fight for me. If my guys fight for me, but you didn't fight for me, some niggas I met along the way and went through some shit fight for me. But nigga, you gave me like, but you don't fight for me. Fuck you. Man, cool, you motherfucking just basically walk the fuck out and say, I'm hey, cool. I'm having a baby. Just fuck you. you know what I'm of course. Right. Or even when the situation happens, sometimes you get to the point where it's like, damn, she pregnant. 
And you looking at it like, damn, I don't even fuck with Shorty like that. But nigga, that's your seed. Like, and if she ain't getting rid of it and y'all keeping it, she keeping it, y'all keeping it. Nigga, what you got? What else do you got to do? You Stand gonna, up be a man. Exactly. But that's what I'm saying. We talking about the niggas that didn't do that, no matter what the case may be. All right, we got somebody coming in. Let's go on here. Let's go on here. Hey now. Uh -oh. Hey, 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 hey. It's you OJ. Hear you hear just fine. You got uh -huh. the better headphones. Welcome yeah. to the nightcap. We don't have too many guests on. You all right now? Yeah, I'm all right. Talking about some y'all with y'all little bonnets on and stuff. Shut up. You know right. You got your bonnet on, don't you? No, my hair in a high bun. Thank you very much. Okay, okay. I what sleep you... cute. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, Soje? How you feeling? Hey, Mr. Kills. Hey, Will. How, how you doing? What's going on? So you still I singing? Keep... Yes. Okay, yeah. We always like people to hype, hype yourself up before you get to talking, though. You know what I'm saying? Let people know they can follow Lord. you. Where, what you got going on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Then you can make um, your comment. Okay. He told us to big yourself up first. Um, <laughs> my name's. My name is Sandra Johnson by birth. <laughs> and then um, I go, my chain says Super SoJ. And um, I'm working on a whole bunch of projects and stuff. I'm actually about to launch like my soap line and uh, like my body butters and stuff. But it's like legit stuff, not like in no shade to nobody else, but it's just like, like esthetician, organic stuff ain't nobody heard of before but it's like amazing straight from imported from africa that i made at the crib like i got a lab so i've been working on it for a couple months now so i'm super excited the album i mean nice. you know nice. just a whole bunch of stuff so that's what i have been doing but um i just want to say that like what i was trying to write but I was trying to type with one finger and one thumb using my so swipe keyboard. <laughs> I what you're <laughs> so. um, basically, it's just like I think that when you come from a lot of like hustling, when you come from some situations like on survival mode, mm -hmm. a lot of times it's hard to be in thriving mode, mm -hmm. even emotionally. So you're not struggling no more. Like, you know how to hustle. You know how to always get money. You know, always know how to, like, keep a job. You know how to provide for yourself and your family. But when it comes to actually feeling yourself and, like, actually listening to people and being encouraged and being supported in a way that actually helps you, like, instead of you being in a tunnel by yourself, you literally are living and seeing people and living a life with people who, like, Y'all done survived some crazy stories together, like crazy stories. That's why y'all call each other the brothers or family, right? But then if you sit in your house and you just start crying because you just like, damn, is this all my life going to be? You wouldn't call and reach out to them. Or you might call and reach out to them and say, hey, man, come play the game. You trying to you trying to play ball? And whole time you really want the company because you in a dark space. Mm -hmm. So that's what I meant by calling your friends and talking to them with intention like this house i'm getting too sad like i gotta get out the crib today like or i'm not feeling i'm not proud of myself i feel like i'm not doing anything and i know that that's not how i feel every day but in this moment is very real hmm. so that's like real. i be sad all the fucking time you know some and it's crazy Crazy because I'm always working on stuff and if you can compare me to other person or quote unquote the average person they always like damn you always got so much going on soja you so smart you so talented you got this you got that but I still be like having meltdowns and instead of me just getting more busy now I downloaded a game on my phone for the first time <laughs> a couple days ago like <laughs> I ain't never had a game on my phone before I don't watch TV series, you know, like I'm really starting to add to schedule me not doing nothing. Right. Sometimes that's what it is. Really? We talked about that. You already know what it is. That could be the opposite side of the coin that I was talking about, like, you know, finding some things to be productive. But you do got to make time just for me time and just like time to fall back. Just a little sidebar in. We got X joining in. X, what up, bro? Can you uh, say some words? Make sure your mic hey, is straight. X. What's really hey. good, brother? Hey. I don't say something. Can you hear me? 
Yeah, yeah we you. you good. Got you. Got you. Oh, okay, okay. You know, I'm out here with this this Afghan Wi-Fi. So, uh... <laughs> hey, we appreciate but, you joining me, <laughs> man. My oh, boy, talk to me. Hey, man, I ain't <laughs> talked to this fool since the last, since I, I um the uh, ex get together. That's what I'm gonna call it because everybody got together because <laughs> of this nigga, the ex the ex anniversary nigga. I think I just saw this one. Hey, man, <laughs> you already know, man. When, <laughs> every time I come to the house, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try and pull everybody out, man. So you know. You like it, uh, like Sanja just said, we did we have been through some things together, so you know you are. Hey, we, those we, are some relationships that those are some relationships that I I forever cherish. You know that that was a uh, I think for all of us that was that was a difficult time in most of our lives coming through high school, man. And yeah, a lot yeah. of people, <laughs> a lot of people don't even understand some of the coming out of high school, bro. Some of us was going through. As we was, you know what I'm saying? We was coming in them and walking them halls every day. And uh I think and a lot of us Yeah, yeah. I think we just kind of that was that was, you know, uh, and it's cliche word, but that was a safe a safe space for a lot of us, man. So uh, you know, whatever we was dealing with before we got to school, once we got to school, we kind of forgot about it, man, because you know. We had to, each other to lean on, and, and we went through them things together, man. So, I think that the hardest part about all of that is that, like, okay, we all got jobs or we survive, right? And we might be doing better than some other people, you know, like maybe we not fiends or maybe we not addicted to nothing or maybe, you know what I'm saying, like we could pay our bills and we not out here doing nothing strange. But at the same time, it's like, um, no matter how far we get, it's still like this. I have no idea what I'm doing kind of feeling because my parents ain't millionaires. My parents mm -hmm. didn't go to college. I went to college. You know what I'm saying? Like I was like a nerd or whatever. And I love, you know, learning and stuff. And it was just like, I learned that shit in school. I couldn't talk about that shit when I got home, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? So it's yeah. like, even as an adult, it's like when you hang in with your friends who you've known since you were seven years old, it's a certain level that y'all really can't mess with no more because the people who you survived that stuff with, they still going through that shit. Right. And you outgrew it. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I'm out on my friends and I'm challenging my friends who still getting their ass whooped by their niggas who still have an abortion every single year who still choosing to beat up people and me and my boyfriend you know bust out my baby daddy car windows and I'm like gee we've been dealing with this since we 16 like mm -hmm. I'm not about to come help you do none of this shit so it's like it comes to a point that sometimes when the people around you don't grow it's almost like we survived, but we not to the thriving part yet. Yeah, I think you, you speak on a lot of real well shit. Well you just talking about like you out of something and your friends ain't out of it. Like, I don't think a lot of times people have jealousy, but a lot of envy happening. You know what I'm saying? And so like people be envious of your happiness and your state of mind. And then sometimes you don't even have it all the way together. It's just that perception in their head that you might have it all together. And, you know, and they looking at that. Well, he got this and they got that. But before I get the babbling on, I just want to add in. Our boy, Sir Brian, jumped on. Appreciate you jumping on, bro. Say what's up, bro. What's, what's good, good? What's hey, good, Brian, man? What's good, bro? Look at what's us. Shit, man? Look at us. Grown ups. Living. Man, I love, I love, I love this night, nightcap podcast, man. Nah, fuck, hey man, we fucking appreciate with you, you bro. We fucking with you too. You already show, know what it is. Show, yeah, it's it's like, just like it's just like uh, Saturday detention, right? <laughs> Y'all ass fading Saturday man. detention, okay? Y'all ass fading. I about, got in Saturday detention for tardies, okay? Nah, Y'all got. I like Y'all got, got Saturday on, detention man. for for skip. I'm like, how y'all get tardies in the middle of the school day? <laughs> <laughs> that was me. <laughs> Y'all think nobody on this motherfucker followed the rules all the way at all? Man, I got caught jump hopping, fucking game shit, just so. <laughs> Boy, they tried to tell me I was still in the car trying to leave. <laughs> Where are you? Going? No, I was getting in the car. 
Yes, I gotta pour me a drink on that shit, bro. <laughs> Not but on some real shit like just us. I see whenever y'all sign in, like if I'm up or something, I listen in or I put a comment in or I throw a like out there. I throw a, put a couple shares or something. And it's something simple like that, like to understand like where you come from and to see that somebody, even if y'all not on, you know, y'all don't got your own Steve Harvey show or whatever, but it's like, you see that this is worth something. So this is support right here or Appreciate being it. able Thanks, to, man. you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, what I had to start doing is understanding who loves me now. Like, who fuck mm. with me now? Mm. Like, not who I want to fuck with me, but, like, who was coming to my shows when I had an open mic on the West Side? Like, who True. always comment on my pictures? Who always, every time they see me, they actually asking me, like, what's up? You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, it's not, sometimes your best friends ain't the people who you thought they was. Like, sometimes you have your set crew stuck in your mind already so mm -hmm. you miss out on all of the people who actually challenge you who actually always telling you like hey but did you do that goal that you told me about every time mm -hmm. they see you they like hey last time i saw you you said you was working on this what's up i told you i got this class for you what's up i mean you got a hundred for this you got a hundred for that bottle you got a hundred for this class like sometimes people think um sometimes people think like Man, that's not support. They always on my ass. Well, he think he's, you know what I'm saying? But no, what really, what support is, is seeing somebody's potential and talking to that. Right. Hey, Sandra, pause real quick. I ain't trying to cut you off and let you jump right back in. Hey, Darwin, you bro, I'll uh, put it in the comment, bro. The link is in the um, post. So back out of the video and look at my <laughs> uh, page and look at the post. You will see there's a link right there. Just click on it and then I'll be able to add you into the conversation. But go ahead, Sandra. Keep building on what you were saying. No, nah, but like, you know, like on some real shit, like I get it. I'm exuberant. I talk a lot, you know, like I be out here and shit. But like I really be going through my shit because it's like no matter what you do, you always have a moment when you by yourself. Like, is this all that is to life? <laughs> yeah. Is this who I really <laughs> am type shit? Yeah. Right. Like if right. I like if, if I'm going to die, do I want my kids to copy and paste this shit? Man, is this sorry. enough? You know what I'm saying? So it's just kind of like that's all I'm that's all I was really trying to say is just like, man, like one of my friends, we grew up on the same fucking block. And she would be like, Well, you she's like, I'm Shonda, you Sandra. And she was like, You the one who made it out. Said, first off, I don't got my own shit. Like, you know, life been kicking my ass just like it's been kicking your ass, but except like you made it out. G, like you got your own crib, you take care of your kids, you got a car. You know, like I'm like, I just I had to move back to my mama crib. Like we you can't keep looking at it like I ain't never been arrested, so I made it. Like you can't do that. So to hear her actually say, like, well, you was the smart one, or you're the pretty one, or everybody not made it made made to make it out. I I was so happy she said that shit out loud to my face. Because she represents a demographic of people that we grew up with, that I grew up with, that looked at me like I'm the like I deserve to go to college or I deserve to never, you know, got got beat unconscious by a nigga. Like, like she legit looked at me in my face and was like, Well, you deserve that shit. Like, you know, like you you supposed to make it out. Like, I just was just sitting yes. there listening to her, like. I don't think it's envy all the time, bro. Like I don't always nope. think that somebody. Nah, it's, it's 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 definitely not envy. That's that's a that's a condition. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, it's what, what what I was just about to go into. It, it, it's kind of multi layered because the the first the first side to it is, you know, you got the little saying, "No new friends," right? And I I think that's bullshit because. Everybody in your circle is not going to grow at the pace that you are, right? Yeah. And what ends up happening is, what ends up happening is, as you're as you're evolving, those those friends that you know your day ones, they'll tend to hold you back <laughs> because some of them may have that state of mind of, well, I'm not good enough, or you know, uh, I'm, I'm just going to ride off of your coattail because. <laughs> You know, you 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 were privileged, or you were blessed more than I was to do this X Y Z. So 
I'm going to just ride it out with you. And it, it ends up sometimes more often than not holding you back from reaching your full potential because now you're trying to carry, you know what I'm saying, whoever else along with you. And then you go into the situation where, well, you, you never want to be, you know, I, I, I've, I've learned, you know, I've, I was taught that you never want to be the smartest person in your circle or the most successful person in your circle because what that mm -hmm. means is now everybody's coming to you and everybody's looking to you, you know what I'm saying, for whatever. And that's that's actually part of, you know, I'm going to pull my my veil back. That's part of my struggle right now with my my uh, mental health is, you know, I come from a family, you know, where number one is not a lot of men. Uh, so we we were it was inbred in us to you know the men are the providers the protectors right mm -hmm. so now there's only a handful of us there's only even less of us that's actually doing something with our lives so now me being one of those in the family everybody looks to me for everything everybody comes to me for everything that shit weighs on the on the man you know what <laughs> yes, i'm saying so I swear to God, bro. Um, that's that's part of my mental health struggle right now because i feel like I'm I'm one day away from failing, right? Like everybody look at you know all the success I've had over the years or the things that I've I'm 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 one day away from failing. Like it, it just like that, things could change and go the other way. And when I fail, it's not just me that's you know, excuse me. If I was to fail, there's it's not just me that's gonna suffer from that. Like, you know, saying I got my 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 primary family, my kids, my wife, and then all the rest of my family or my friends that may be dependent upon me at the in in those in those circumstances. So it's 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 hard to sit there and stay loyal to uh these these day ones who no matter how much you try or uh, uh how much you you try to encourage them, they got that state of mind that you know I'm never gonna be nothing, I'm never gonna achieve anything. I'm just you know I'm gonna just hang off, off, off of you, you know. Right. So and, and go back to what you just said, Sandra, about you know having to go home or whatever. That, that like people look at the house that I bought and they think I bought that house just because I wanted to show off a big ass house. The reason that when I bought my house, it was the, the most important thing for me was I have all daughters. So the mm -hmm. most important thing to me was at 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 any age, no matter how old they get, no matter how many kids they got. If they ever needed to come home, there was enough space for them to come home and be comfortable mm -hmm. and not not feel like they're stuck in a situation with, you know, some dude that's doing them wrong or uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, they out here struggling in, in a certain situation because they feel like, well, I ain't got nowhere else to go. So I just got to deal with it. Or I just got to accept. It. That's important. So, and, and that's real shit, X. And then, X, let me ask you this. Why, 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 why you just say that? You think it's by accident, bro? We got all daughters, bro. Nah, nah. My mama sure, makes it clear uh, every day. <laughs> it's payback, bro. You know I got all crazy, girls too, bro. bro. It's payback, bro. We whatever we did. <laughs> Girls, bro. Man. Hey, when I had the one last year, I'm like, here we go, boy, boy. Yeah. Oh, damn. Nah, nah. That's oh, why damn. I'm not trying no more. I went and bought my boy. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. I feel you. It got me a dog. <laughs> Mm -hmm. D, what's up, man? I see you down. Yeah, there. pause in for Darwin, man. What up, D? Darwin, see you yeah, up in this Darwin, motherfucker. Bro, what's man. really good? What up, what Chilling up, in this motherfucker. You down ATL yeah. and shit? Man, I'm just, I'm just listening to y'all, man. I, uh, shit, just trying to, trying to put my little two cents in and get this information that y'all giving. It's real, some real enlightenment going on right now. You know, oh, yeah, it's from all, really all different aspects. Y'all touching on a lot of points, and uh, you know. Uh, but it, it, it's definitely mental health is definitely a serious, a serious. Um, I, don't, I don't know what to call it, but it's a problem going on, and I don't think it's a problem that everybody can like conquer at one time. You know what I'm saying? Because mental health is only mental health to that person. You know what I'm saying? So it's definitely a personal thing. No one can really understand someone else's mental health. And I think only thing we can do is just support someone that we see is going through it. Because I, I used to look at people and be like, man, this dude's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like this, this motherfucker fucked up. You know what I'm saying? He, he fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Not knowing. Right. He's not fucked up. You know what I'm saying? It's not it's not the 
And it's not like the language that I was using, like, he's fucked up. No, he just has some problems that we don't understand what he's going through. And the only way to help him is to support him because he's the only one that can get himself out of those that that, that problem that he's going through. Because we will never, you can never understand a person's problem. Even if it's two people going through the same thing, two people going, like, like if someone's mother got, someone's mother died and my mother died. I still don't have the same problems that that person had. Just because we went through my mother dad and her mother dad or his mother dad, I still don't understand that person's feelings. You see what I'm saying? In a relationship like like it's mental health is so fragile like that 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 because everybody handles things differently. Everybody went through everybody's background is different. Everybody's childhood is different. Everybody grew up differently. So it is not it's nothing I can really say to a son somebody that's going through something that's going to help them get out of it. But the only thing I can do is support them and let them know that I got your back no matter what decisions you make. You know what I'm saying? Because they can only want, they're the only ones that get their person out the rabbit hole. You know? Yeah, I, feel, I definitely feel you on that, D. I think it always about that person. That person going to have to be the person to make the moves anyway. Mm -hmm. You know? Like That's I said, I man, saying growing first. up, I like I said, I seen a lot of people battle with addiction and beat addiction. I seen some people fall victim to it, and some people mm -hmm. are still battling it to this day. And those people tell you, even though if they five, seven years down the line, it's still a day at a time. So, like, like you say, to us, it'll be like, man, you just need to do this. But they'll let you know, yeah. like, man, I'm this much to the edge of going back to the deep end of going in super hard. So it's real. Because like, you, you see people, good. you see people with the most support, and they still be falling victim to it. And then you see people mm -hmm. with no support That's and they get saying, through bro. it and they get mm -hmm. through it. So it's really no, you can't pinpoint on how to, how to treat somebody that's going through it. Also, only right. thing you can do is support them. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because, you know, you, you don't know what's going trigger, they trigger um, the moments that they have, you know, you can give them some, some support and give them, them some advice that, that lead them down that rabbit hole. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you can so let me, like, so hey, you, yeah. So why you write that, D? Let me ask you this. What about those people that, that thrive on pity? The people that love the pity party? And y'all open, all y'all open to answer this too. Like you say, it's some people that just love to put themselves into some shit so they can get that love. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn, bro, you always putting yourself that. in these situations. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, but that's, that's, a, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's an accountability that's, issue. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, at yeah. some point, you right. got to be accountable it's, 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 to it's your a bit fucking of a, situation, bro. Hold on. Hold on that's, that's, a bit of a, that's a bit of a mental health problem as well because... You don't like, True. like D just said, you don't know what they went through in their upbringing to where they become dependent upon that attention, right? It may, mm -hmm. you know, just think about a dog, right? How they say, you know, your dog will uh, carry out certain uh, activities because he's he's kind uh, he's crying for your attention, right? So that be a, a, a trait that as a human that you that they're doing because they're they're demanding that attention because it may be something that they wasn't given. Uh, as they as they were brought up, or it could be something that they were given too much of, and now they become dependent. It's a drug to them; like they don't know how to function without that that extra attention. So now I'm doing right. dumb shit to you know get my family or my friends to, or I'm I'm going standing on the bridge every week, talking about I'm gonna kill myself, but I ain't never jump. You know what I'm saying? I just want y'all to come out here and take pictures of my ass. You right, know what I'm right. saying? That, that's it's, 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 it's a mental health. I don't think yeah, that I think it's a I think it's a it's a it's a response though because for example crazy shit just be happening to me right and I think it's about perspective for a long time I would be trying my best and things just wouldn't work out right and it wasn't that I wanted to have a pity party I just didn't know you good you good keep going I don't know who it was but it stopped it was play out I just didn't know myself as healed me. I didn't know myself as a uh, successful me. I didn't know myself as no matter what, I'm going to be okay. So I didn't know myself out of chronic sick SoJ or her shit just not going to work out. Almost don't count SoJ. Like I've never seen my side myself on the other side of my project actually got finished or I didn't get sick this time or whatever. Like I just started a new job, which was a miracle. I had an asthma attack the night before in my sleep. I literally tripped and fell and almost broke my wrist two days ago. My Uber canceled on me three times this morning. And the only difference 
it's between these life things that's happening to me, my response to it now. I'm just like, if I try my best, I'm going to make it happen. Or if I try my best, I'm going to say, I tried my best. If I lose this job because I'm something happens in the morning or whatever, I'm in probation, I can't get off. Like I can't take a day off. I'm going to try my best. Rain, sleet or snow. Like when that happened, I literally got to work literally as the second was changing at seven o'clock, like when I was supposed to be there. And I've been noticing that when I change my mentality that by any means necessary, I'm going to get in front of the things that I'm used to experiencing. I am. Mm -hmm. I'm used. I'm ex I'm used to experiencing shit not working out for me. So since I'm an expert at that, I t I'm, I've turned myself into that's my superpower. Like I'm a powerful being because no matter what happens to me, I'm going to be resilient. So I was a crybaby, emotional ass person. And I also was the rock to every fucking person who meets me. However, I did not know myself on the other side of success. So it's really about when you decide that it don't fucking matter. Like when something happens, my friend was like, oh, you're having a rough day. I said, no, I'm having a day. Hmm. So That's you know it. what? I'm I'm glad you spoke to that. And uh, let me just throw something out there. Hey, Dar, when I pause your mic, bro, because if you got some headphones, it'd be better for you to throw them in so we'll hear no echoes. And Sir Brian, I appreciate you for muting your mic, bro, because that helps us out. So we'll have no extra echo when everybody else talking because it'll pick up your speakers. That's what happens. So whenever you're ready to talk, D, just let me know we unmute your mic and shit, and then we can get back into it. But you real sound for like I ain't went through that shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I grew up and I'm gonna be real with you. Some people in my life that I had to count on. They used to throw pity parties for themselves all the time. And I'm counting on them to do some shit for me. And they throwing a pity party. And I'm just like, yo, fuck. Like, I know you working hard, but we got to get this shit done. I don't give a fuck about all the other shit. What we got to get done? And I and I had to understand at a certain point that I'm emotionally built like that. I can throw all the shit aside and not worry about my feelings to get the job done. Everybody can't do that. And I had to grow up and mature into that. Experience so, your experience just made you like that. You know but I'm because glad that happened. That right. gave you the, the clarity for it. But I'm glad she spoke to that because it's, it's I don't like I say, I don't know the other side of the coin. That's like emotionally like I don't want to say this in the wrong way. Please don't take me saying this in the wrong way. But like, I ain't saying it now, but, you know, you needed that emotional connection like that. I done been through so much shit that I kind of get like uh, cold with it and I don't have it. So when I do get it. It gets super no, let big. Me, let me you know explain what one thing. What I'm saying okay. is, is that when you are the reliable person that all these mm -hmm. emotional people call on, right? Okay. I did not notice that I'm the same mirror, that okay. I was attracting the same thing, that I'm an enabler. So I had to start telling my friends and my families and all these people that I'm the rock for. I had to start telling them, no, I sent you a long text message. Reread what I wrote you. So when you feel like that, you got to <laughs> calm yourself down. You are fine. I, I'm like, I start holding people accountable. No, I can't come over and spend a night with you just because I don't have kids. Like, I got to stay at home and work in my lab, you know? So once I stopped being so available for all my pity partiers, they not pity partiers. I love yeah. them so much that they think that they can't do it without me. I enabled them. That's one. Right. Two, once I got everybody else off the get off of me, I started noticing my own pity parties. I started right. noticing my own mourning of my own life. Like, oh my God, I gained 30 pounds in 60 in six months. I don't even look like my album cover. What am I gonna do? I start finding my own pity in my own life instead of the power in it. I start saying, damn, I'm back at my mama crib instead of damn, I can save this bread. Damn, I start finding my own pity party. So it's like a lot of things that I was finding in other people. Once I got those other people out of my space and I and I took those responsibilities off my shoulders, I started noticing that the reason why this person can live in my life so predominantly is because I'm the same person. I'm just a high functioning pity partier. Can't nobody sit next to me no more whining and shit no more because <laughs> I'm not like that no more. Can't nobody call me like when my friend was like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry you fell. I said, I iced it. I'm going to see what's happening. And I'm still going to work in the morning. Like, it's like not even a discussion no more. It's just a fact. Like, I just told you in an event when somebody say, oh, I'm sorry, you're not feeling well. I was like, I'll be straight in a couple hours. Like, you know, like I'm just changing the conversation around it now. Like everything about me is different now. 
and it happened from me having to get to elevate and challenge the people around me and separate too some shit you know what i'm saying so it's just like what i'm saying is is that you might not know you got pity party in you until you start challenging and elevating the people around you and and challenging yourself to be who you say that you are be what you say you're gonna be do what you say you're gonna do look at why your goals not see what you've given up on like oh it was just too hard or it didn't work out i had kids so i couldn't do it my wife had cancer so i had to put that down for a second man i stopped playing ball because of blah 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 blah. no mm -hmm. you just stopped getting up earlier in the day no right. you rather you would rather sleep in than get up and go do that no yeah. so it is like so we all think that we not like the people that we surrounded by it's fact. Yes, the fuck we yeah, are. But if, if, Otherwise, if, if, right, that's, that's why you connected them. to them. True. Yeah, that, you facts. That's why you connect. Seven millionaires. You gonna be the eighth. <laughs> right. You know, right, right. eight pity partiers. You the eighth one. Me. You just a high functioning one. Facts, facts. Let's hear what Darwin. What you gotta do? I kind of, I kind of like the more I learn about mental health, the more I hate the word mental health. Right. Because it's like this is just life. Like. I think mental health was like a scapegoat to, to label people and tell, tell people something's wrong with you, right? When people didn't understand you. But it's so much information out here right now, and it's so and there's so much things that we can do to prevent a lot of things that it's like unnecessary to, to label someone as having mental health problems when it's just life. Everybody is going through this. Like everybody has problems. Everybody has issues. Everybody deals with it in different ways. And I can call someone crazy today, and I can do the same thing next week. And then they go call me crazy. Because you never know when what your reaction might be when, it's, when, when something happens. You know, you can always say, oh, if this happens, I'm going to do this. Or if this happens, I'm going to do that. You know, but you, don't, you really don't know. You just assume and this is what you will do. So when people start labeling people as having mental health issues and this and that, it's just a, like a scapegoat to say something's wrong with you and I don't understand it. But no, we really do understand it. We understand it. It's a thing called life. And, and life happens to everybody. So, and I think the lack of understanding and the lack of empathy is what's missing in this world right now. And it's just, it's leading to a lot of, a lot of people being labeled as crazy or having mental health issues or or they need help, but no one's is actually trying to help them. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of a lot of programs has been shut down, um, especially as far as for the kids. Like um, the only only result now for kids is jail. You know, you usually you used to can send your kids juvenile detention for about a week, and mm -hmm. and they get right. You know what I'm saying? They get right. They 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 learn that hey, this isolation is not the is not the way. This this isolation is not what I want. And they'll come home and they got their act together. But now the only thing that's, that they can go to is jail. And that's not no isolation. That's just life. That's, that's just life. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. That's like lack of freedom. So, and, and I think once you start labeling these people with mental health issues, that starts putting, um, it, it starts putting like black and white. It's, it's like putting this, putting it on paper. Okay, this person has mental health problems. Okay, now, so now they're, they're a number now. Right. So if this right. happens to this person, we go lock them up and put them right. in a home, whatever, or, or or put a number on them. And it's not it's not no emotion to it. It's just right. like, everybody like, doctors now with that shit. Do you like you say like everybody labeling a motherfucker with some shit? Like he got you know ADHD and, or some shit. And that's shit. and that's to not deal with it really. Mm -hmm. It's just to be like okay, you you you're messed up. Okay, we understand you're messed up. You have you have anger issues or whatever the case may be. You have anger issues, so that that's you're just messed up. So that's what you are. No, right. you're not angry. It's something. It's, it's something that happened to this person. That's happening. That's that's having them react this way. Now, are you going to get to that to the bottom line of it, or are they willing to even have self evaluation to get to that? You know. And it took me a while. I, I go to counseling now with my wife, and it right. took me a while to even accept that. You know, because I always like I don't need no counseling. I don't need anyone telling me about me. I, I'm right. good. I know what I, I know what I do. I know what I, I know what I need. But I went to counseling that's, for her, and that's, that's big of you, D. Like I know you, so that's big of you to say like you go to counseling and shit like that. That's real shit. Exactly, and through and and when I went to counseling for her, I start seeing things in myself 
that I wasn't liking. And I start seeing things in myself that people was always telling me over the years, like, yeah, you this, you that, you that. I'm like, whatever, you don't know me. But no, people know you more than you know yourself. They see the real you when you, because nine times 10, you're not being real to people. Because right. everybody, everybody wants to fit in. Everybody wants to uh, be liked. So, you know, when, when people, like, especially when women say, I, I get dressed, I, I dress like this because I, I like to see myself like this. No, 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 no. Subconsciously, you're dressing like this for a man. Subconsciously, you want to be, you want to be appealing to I like my titties like out. To, you know? <laughs> I like my titties what? out. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> he said that women, he said that right. women dress like, you know what I'm saying? I get it. But as a, as a woman spokesperson here, like. Mm -hmm. I dress how I want to dress. Yeah, so I just yeah. came back into the conversation. That was the first thing I heard. <laughs> hey, son, do you mind if I use that? Like, it, it, as a clip? Anyone, it, I'm, I'm you said what? Do you I'm mind if I use it as a clip? It wasn't a point at women, but me, me and two, we do things. We do Wait. things like the way we dress, the way we act. Is not is not really for us. It, it's just it's just not. You know what I'm saying? It's just not because guess what? Every everybody was born naked, right? So we right. had a choice to either wear men clothes or women clothes. But because of our experience, we started wearing either what clothes, what men clothes or, or women clothes, whatever, right? Through our experience, we started acting a certain way. Through our experience, we started talking a certain way because we want to be accepted by those that's around us. So it's never because, yeah, of course you can say on the surface, I dress like this because I want to. Yeah, of course you do. But why are you dressed like that? Because you want to. Because you want to be accepted by either your peers or the men that's looking at you. Like, it, well, it, I'm gonna say something. Deep, I think that in the beginning, deep. that's the I, truth. Though. Hold, 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 hold on, hold on, Sandra. Let him finish. Let him finish. It, yeah, Sandra, it, next. Let me finish. Like it's real deep. You know what I'm saying? On the surface, you can just you, if you scratch the surface. Of course, every everybody will say. I even used to say it. I do. I do what I want to do because I like to do it. No, nah, but once you start digging the deep and nah. you start looking for yourself, I dress the way I dress because I like the reaction I'm getting from people when I dress the way I dress. That's what it is right there. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're not going to dress a certain way because just before you. It's just not going to happen. If someone told you you was ugly, how you look, you're gonna change. You're gonna stop. You're gonna stop. You're gonna stop wearing your hair like that. You're gonna stop. You're gonna stop wearing the dresses you dress. Dress. You're gonna stop wearing the dresses you're wearing. Because if if ten people told you you're ugly, you're gonna stop doing that. But if ten people told you look good, you're gonna keep doing that. That's just that's just natural. That's just like like that's just like survival instincts and and how you want to live in the world and be appreciated. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. people have right. to do self evaluation now and be like, why am I acting like this? And you have okay, to be D. truthful with yourself in the truth. Right. Hurts. You got to strip yourself right. down. I you ain't know, trying to cut you off, but I, I do want Sandra to get a chance to retort because she has something yeah. different to say. So, Sandra, yeah. go ahead and say what you had to say on in, in your retort. I'm not going to say that. Um, what I was saying is that at some point in your life, like you do have to evaluate, like, what is your why and what is your rationale be behind things? Um, but realistically, like, I could have got on this live, like I could have put some makeup on, I could put some lashes on, I could have like put on like a tank top that you could see my titties. Like I literally got a hoodie on, some jogging pants. I went to work on my face like this. And people have told me like, girl, you ain't got no makeup on. People tell me I look bad when I'm this size. People, when I was growing up, no matter what, people used to always say something about my titties, always say something about my booty. Always say something about my thighs. Always say, like, somebody always got something to say. When I was a virgin, people, t this girl told my mama that Sandra fucking, you just don't know. Look at, she walk like she fucking. It's like, people, <laughs> That's people, shit. Always, people always got, got, got something to say. People always got something to say. So at this point in my life, I feel like I was more conservative. I feel like I spoke more conservatively because of what the perception or what people have actually said out their mouth to me. It got to a point that when I was at, and I'm not saying that I disagree with what you're saying. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that at some point you grow out of it. Like that's not who I am now. Some stuff you do because you're a child. 
some stuff you do because of protection. Some I grew up in a fucking hood. Having a body as a child, having to commute to school by yourself is a dangerous situation. So some of those things, of course, I agree with you, comes from experience. When I used to sing in clubs, do you know how many niggas used to put their hands on me? Always touching me. Every time they want me to sing a song, it's something nasty. I'm always the girl that that I'm the stripper in the song and he was at the strip club and he just, you know how many niggas it's like singing me something on my voicemail and make me go to sleep. Like it's always an over sexualized thing because I got body. Right. It's always a, my business casual ain't business casual. My same slacks ain't the same slacks as the girl. That's a zero. So it is a certain burden that I feel that people say, Oh, you no at, at one, at some point I'm not wearing a turtleneck. Because you still gonna see him. I'm just gonna live in this body the way I'm gonna live in this body. If you don't think, think that I'm pretty, if you I don't think that I'm pretty off. without makeup, if niggas like it comes to a point that you outgrow the that you outgrow trying to make other people happy. And, and I ain't want to cut you off, Sandra, but I think that was the main thing. I think from your side is that you can't help but to be that. So, like, even if you ain't even trying to be on that shit, say you want to separate yourself from that shit. Say if you do everything you want to to separate yourself from that. I know Muslim women that cover themselves up, and I niggas still be like, damn, she thick as fuck up under that motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just naturally I, what I we do. You here. know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, and it is, it's innate within our nature. And it's hard for us to separate it. And I think that's just always going to be a dilemma because we never going to be able to separate it. It's in our nature. Like, it, I don't give a damn what you was. So, you were mad. So you not, and not even to go him. And not even to yeah. go him. I get it. If my nigga like red hair, I'm going to wear red hair because I don't look at myself as I'm walking down the street. Like, I'm going to wear it. But guess what? He's only going to get the red hair options that I like. It's going to be okay. long braids. It's going to be curly <laughs> hair. Or, But I'm not about to just create. I'm not going to be nobody blow up doll. Like, at one right. point, I think that I was more agreeable. You know, I, I change certain things, but I'm outspoken now because I'm going to be myself. Like, I wear what I want, my nose piercings. I even brought it up in my interview. Like, what's up? Like, you okay with the way I look like? Like, you okay with afros? You okay with nose piercings? You okay with, like, what's up? Is so like Sandra. I flat out said it, Sandra. But, Sandra, so Sandra I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, Sandra. Sandra. Um, so, yeah, what up? I, I feel like you 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 pretty much got a, got got your, got a good head on your shoulder. I just want to uh, ask you this question: Like, you remember when Aisha? Are you aware when Aisha Curry made the comment about she wanted to be um, what, what can I say? She wanted to be desired by other men and uh, get complimented um, by other men, right? So yeah. a lot, a lot. She got a lot of backlash from that. Because hell yeah, um, I, I agree with her. I don't I don't hold nothing back for. Her. I don't think she's she's a whore or she she's bogus or she made her man look bogus or anything, right? Because mm -hmm. that's a part of mental health, right? So, like you said, you're you're you you have a nice figure or whatever, and just let's just say you didn't have a nice figure and you just walked around the neighborhood and you never got any compliments or anything like that. No man never looked at you or anything, right? That's going to make the but in all the women, all the women with better bodies or so-called better bodies. I shouldn't say better bodies, but all the women that had bigger butts that was uh, more appealing to men. They was getting getting all the comments, all the play. Of course, that's going to do something for your, for your self-esteem, right? Because you see, you're, you're looking like all. all I mean, these that that can apply to me now, but that yeah. But ask about my experience. That actually yeah. has happened to me. Regardless, do you know how many dudes turn me down because I don't wear like lace fronts and stuff or because I will go outside without my makeup on or because my friend. Do you know how many times I've been out and I be with my friends that's smaller than me and niggas be on a ass? Do you know how it is dating? Not fucking. Do you know how many niggas be like, that's, that's a waste. Soon. Holla at me when you fucking. Well, so it's don't. like sexuality. <laughs> People think that it's so simple. People think it's just about having some titties. Some people, no, sometimes it's about accessibility. Can so I, I've experienced that. Question? They used to hurt yo, my fucking feelings. Hey, yo, son, people used to say, I look. 
I won't try to cut you off, but I was trying to get extra slide in real quick off your comments. She, 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 would you finish? She can finish that. She can finish that thought. But my thing is, is that that's the thing that I feel like I understand the argument of loving yourself and being who you want to be and all of that stuff. But the person saying it can't also like there are I have felt like, damn, these hoes be winning. Damn. <laughs> uh Mm -hmm. I, why did why am I going to work every day when I can just get an OnlyFans page? Why am I singing? Why did I go to school? Why don't I just get a baller ass nigga? Why don't I date one of the drug dealers that I grew up with? Like it's not just about like sometimes you do want to look good. Sometimes you do want somebody to say, "Oh my goodness, you look beautiful." If a nigga tell me I look beautiful when I'm at a store dressed like my brother, I'm telling you, he get brownie points. <laughs> he get brownie points because it is stressful wanting to be desired. It is. However, I do come to a point, if I put on a dress, I'm not finna put on a dress just so a nigga can talk to me at a club. It ain't happening because it makes no sense in my life. Now, for women who who date dudes because they hungry, like they go on dates just to eat. The girl <laughs> who who texts niggas back. Yes, that will hey, make hey, sense. Hey, sidebar, niggas do be fucking for places to stay, so it's kind of equal out here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so all I'm saying is, is that, yeah, it's an easy thing to say. Like, man, what if you didn't have a body? I understand how my size zero friends feel. They always like, oh my God, well... I want to get plastic surgery or give me them titties, girl, whatever. But then, you know, they might have had more genuine opportunities with men. It's a give and take from both sides. It's stressful, both sides. I've wanted to be desired in both ways. Like, it's everybody feels like that. Like, you put your best outfit on, you got your haircut and you got your cologne on and you thought you looked nice. And then ain't nobody say man your hair look nice or whatever and men don't get compliments like women get anyway uh I, x you want to go i have something to say but i think x wanted to go say something yeah x was yeah so, so, so uh basically my, my 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 comment to it was you can't you gotta kind of and, and i guess it comes back to the upbringing and and, and uh, you know, our own personal morals and values. You can't give in to the the stereotypes or, or, or what the society deems acceptable because you're going to put yourself in a trick bag like that. And what, what, I, what, I, what I mean by that is um, there's, there's, there's females that I know that, you know, we went to school with or, uh, you know, we, we, we've grown up with or seen and you know they've 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 had the the curves since you know high school or, or sooner or whatever the, the case was the difference between them and maybe uh another female was the way you carry yourself mm -hmm. and what i mean what i mean by that is uh starting off both of them you know are gonna get that same attention the dudes on some thirsty shit, hey little mama you know what I'm saying or trying to you know the 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 what 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 makes the difference is the response right one one female is gonna give in and and she gonna find it appealing or she gonna think take it as a compliment the other one is gonna be like yo bro don't come at me like that you know what i'm saying if, oh, if you're gonna really? approach me approach me correctly right and that's where the difference is gonna was is gonna come in because um uh, you'll have the one who carries themselves with a bit more, I would, I would say like classy. Uh, and those are the ones who most guys are either not going to approach because they feel like I don't have a shot or they're going to approach them correctly. And then you got what we call the low hanging fruit to where it's like, yo, shorty got her ass out. Shorty got, you know, look like this, <laughs> look like that. She, she entertaining the, the, the energy. Yeah. I'm about to see what, you know, what shorty talking about, you know? And, and you you have to be careful with it. Like <laughs> I I I don't 
like to, you know, slut shame women for wanting to dress sexy or, or look appealing or, you know, they they want to uh, show their curves or whatever. But there, there has to be a, a, a level to it where you got to understand where that line is. And there also has to be you, your personality plays a role in it because if if you're known to be a woman that I, I bet not step to that way, you you can come out the house butt naked and a motherfucker ne- still probably ain't gonna say nothing because they know Thanks. yeah don't say she's the shorty you know what I'm saying shorty gonna treat you and she ain't she ain't the one you know what I'm saying as opposed to the other one who where they feel like shit she can she can you know I'm I'm gonna shoot my shot at shorty while she in a choir road. <laughs> like, and, she, and, she going <laughs> and that's and that's why that's why I respect the women that have the OnlyFans. I even respect strippers. I even respect Marilyn Monroe because they were intentional on what they wanted. They were intentional on how to get it. So in the same regards as okay, they wanted a man with money, so they did the things to get a man with money. Yep. On OnlyFans, those women are after men with money to get money. So a woman that wants a man with some type of substance, they're going to do things intentionally to get that man with substance. And they're not going to look at the stereotypes that was created by society. So what I'm saying is, if you want a man with some type of substance and you're not looking for that baller, that man that's driving that nice car, or that man that's, that's, that's fly all the time, that man... That's, that's, that's materialistic. You want a man with substance, you're going to act different from all the other women, right? And no matter what someone says about you or to you, you're still going to act different because you know your goal and you know your why. So why even care about what the society what, what society has created for you, right? So um, a long time, many years, many, 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 many years ago, I used to complain to my, my, my friend, which is now my wife, about the women I was dating. This is when she was just a friend. I was like, man, all these hoes is crazy. These bitches is crazy. I used to say this all the time. Oh, they crazy. They do this. She was like, maybe you need to change on change what you do. Maybe you need to change on how change how you act. And I'm like, I ain't changing nothing. They gonna accept me for me. You know what I'm saying? This and that. And I'm just gonna. I, I thought I was gonna find a woman that I wanted the way that I was acting, and that was just not gonna happen. I was acting ratchet, so I got a ratchet woman. But once I started being intentional on how I acted. Not caring what my friends said, and especially because men are influenced a lot by the people they hang around. And um, I think Will touched on that. He said, um, "You, you, you, the behavior you exhibit is because of the the people you hang around." So, and I learned this at work. The the, the top five people that you hang around the most, you start picking up on their characteristics, and you're the sum. You're the. I'm sorry. I'm gonna say it the right way. You're the sum of the five people you hang around the most, right? So if you hanging around these toxic mes- these toxic males and these men with these masculinity issues, then you're going to be you, you're somewhat going to be acting like them, right? So that's who I was hanging around. I was hanging around these men with these these toxic ways, with these masculinity problems, and I was just hanging around them doing things that they would do. So when I stopped doing that and start doing my own thing, I started getting women that I was attracted to that was treating me right, that was treating me how I wanted to be treated because I was actually giving them uh, my substance. I was actually giving them me, you know what I'm saying? Instead, and not the, work, and not the me that the world created. I was, at, I was at my rawest form. So it's not all about, you know, um, you, you, you have to just, you have to, you, you really have to break yourself down to the simplest form and just go, and just go to that, and like I said, I took a lot of counseling and I and I realized a lot of things that was wrong with me to correct. I had to correct myself. I had to really correct myself, you know, and uh, it took a lot of help. And it took a person for me to trust to tell me these things like uh, someone else could have told me the same thing, but I wouldn't listen. But it took someone for me to trust to tell me these things. You see what I'm saying? And it wasn't even someone like my mother or my father or my brother. And it was someone it was someone else. You know what I'm saying? So. You know what I'm saying it's like all these things that people are going through. It is they can only go through it and, and fix it on their on their own. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, we I, say accountability. We say accountability because you was ready. It took somebody to trust. It took it took somebody that you trust to to tell you what you need to hear. 
But mm-hmm. that's because you was only open to hearing it. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. That's what we said. Yeah. I was saying accountability is a is a thing. Like you can't enable you can't enable somebody who who have pity parties and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. and when you went if it's if, if pity if having pity parties is like it's a it's a it's a mental health issue or whatnot. So what happened to the person who had a pity party who who is no longer being enabled by the person? You know what I'm saying? Who usually and who usually does who usually does that? Same thing. It's just it's a whole accountability issue. So I mean, if mental health is yeah. is life, then how do you go about? You know what I'm saying like fixing that. It's not really a fix to it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All you can, like you said, is really do is is, is be a, is, it is be a support a system. You can all you can do is be a support system. How, what's the fix? What's the fix, bro? But Let see, me know. but see, it's, you you saying it's a fix, but maybe it's not a fix. Maybe it's just something you just don't understand. Maybe they, maybe these people that that we call having mental issues, maybe they need to just be around people that's like them, and then they won't say it's I just a, it's fucking a love them. Yeah, man, it, right. like, 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 it's easy for us to say something wrong with somebody else because we don't, we didn't go through that, we don't live our life the way they live it. So it's mm-hmm. easy for us to say True. something wrong with them. Like I see, I hear a lot of people saying, "Oh man, they, they relationship is toxic." Oh, well, why are they together? This and that. Well, we don't know why they together. They might be happily, they might be happy together. This couple, but because they live in a different life that we live in, it's looking crazy to us. It's just looking crazy to us. But if they get around people that's living like them, it's not looking crazy to them. It's right to them. So now I'm saying like it's 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 it's, it, it, it's life. It's not a problem. It's not a fix. It's just it's it, man. It's just life, man. I just I just I just empathize with everybody that's going through anything. You know what I'm saying? Because I never know what they what the, if it's a problem or if it's not. It's, I know a lot of people who look at me and my wife and say, "Man, they ass crazy as hell." I would never do that. And I look at them like. I'm happy as hell right now, though. How I'm living, right? But in so, essence, that's you that, think, that's you. You just said a solution. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's so that's what, what I'm trying what to get. You to. might think is a problem. What you might think is toxic. What my what you might think is crazy. I'm happy as hell, dude. Right, mm-hmm. and that's the solution. Like right there. Just, uh, mm-hmm. happy. That's what I'm hell. saying. That's what I'm trying to get to, bro. Happy but, but happy right is, Hold on, y'all. I'm gonna let Sir Brian chime in because he had a comment from before going, Sir Brian. What's up, bro? No, nah, no, nah, I was just saying, you know, like that's the solution right there. You know what I'm saying? Being true with yourself. Like he was saying, like Darwin was saying, man, you gotta break yourself down and see who you really are. You know what I'm saying? Cause you basically live in this facade for everybody else. Mm-hmm. But man, whatever makes you happy, whatever truly makes you happy, like that's what you really do. That's what you truly live for. You know what I'm saying? It's like fuck everything else. Like, like, like he said, man, you get around motherfuckers just doing what the fuck you doing. Shit, y'all two peas in a bucket. Or whatever the fuck they say, you know what I'm saying? In a pie. Mm-hmm. But shit. <laughs> Same shit. It, it, That's it, how it, it really I, is. So. This, and one more thing. I learned this, like, uh, I never hung with Jonte. Like Jonte, I never hung with him in high school. But when I got older, me Jonte is like one of my best friends. Hey, now he cool as fuck. Exactly. Yeah. So in high school, I would have never hung around him because at that point in my life, it was like, well, whatever you talking about, uh, you a lame to me. You a this and that. Yo, I ain't fuck with you. But when I got older and I start breaking myself down, and I was like, man, dude is really on some cool shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had to break myself down just to just to realize I had to get over myself. You know what I'm saying? I had to stop listening to what other people said was cool. And what other people thought was a fab, and I had to listen to myself say, "This is what's cool to me. This is what makes me happy." And now that's like one of my best friends. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's not even about what other people say. Like, no one can call me crazy, and I just be like, "Yeah, I'm crazy." <laughs> I'm just looking like, man, what? What? No, no, I'm not crazy. This is my life. <laughs> this right. is my life. I'm either happy or I'm not. And you can't tell me if I'm happy or if I'm not. Only I can tell myself if I'm happy or, uh, and I'm not. You know what I'm saying? So I think mm-hmm. a lot of people need to just like, and, I, and, and it's hard. And it's, it's real hard. It's real hard. You know, like I said, I go to counseling for this shit. So I know it's hard. And I st- I'm still working on myself. And there's a lot of issues I still got that I'm still trying to, you know what I'm saying, trying to conquer. You know what I'm saying? But at the root of myself, I know what actually makes me happy and I know what doesn't. I know what when people say I'm crazy. I know when people say, Oh, you 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 do crazy things. I'm like, okay, yeah, I, I might see how that might let makes me look crazy to you. But you ain't went through what I when I went through. You don't know why I react the way I act. 
You don't know why I say the things I say when I need to say it. So, yeah, I might be crazy you, but it's not a... I wouldn't call myself mental health. Uh, I have a mental health issue. I have, I'm crazy. I think that's just something that people just say to people when they don't understand them. So it's easy that's to say, right. oh, he crazy. Yeah, I know. That's that's the easy thing to say. It's easy. I wonder what they did before all these labels that they had for all these Ex- different mental illness. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Based, 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 based off that. Oh, they wrote the Bible. Off- <laughs> <laughs> They wrote the Bible. They, off they had them. They just wasn't using them for black people. We oh, yeah. They had them. Based off what based off what you were saying, like, so how do you feel about like having medicine for mental health? Like, if Riddling mental health medicine. is life, like then why medicine. would you need medicine to solve people's problems who have quote unquote mental health problems? I'm on my medicine right now. <laughs> I, I I believe in medicine like in different ways. Um like like you said, he on his medicine right now. You know, mm-hmm. some people, however you need to deal with your your shit, deal with your shit. You know, you you know, or you might not know, but however you feel your happiest when you're not if you if you happy and you're not bothering nobody and you're not making nobody else unhappy, you good. That in my and that's my opinion. Like whatever I, you I do, you on that shit. whatever you do that makes you happy and you're not bothering nobody, you're mm-hmm. good. Man, but I feel like sometimes the things that make you happy does bother people and it makes them unhappy because they're not doing the same work. So it's just like a lot of this, it's a, it's like a lot of converse a part of this conversation. You right, know, that's it's just like I'm, I'm at a I'm at a I'm at a space that is just like that's not it's not your business. Like this is my thing, not you, but just a person. It's not anybody's business to respect some I mean to not respect somebody like like I respect everybody. So it's like if you want to put your pussy on the internet, do it. If you want to be a nun, do it. If you want to go to work, do it. If you don't want to go to work, do it. Because the real respect is understanding that everybody's time on earth is theirs. So whether you want to be married, whether somebody want to be single, whether somebody ta- it takes somebody 40 years to have kids and settle down, that's what it took for that person to come to a place to do that. And I don't think that it's fair to say, um, well, this person ain't right or whatever. Like, first of all, can't nobody say that you're crazy. Even my friends that I feel like are in, I don't say that they're in toxic situations. When my friend calls me and be like, well, my man did this and da 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 da, I don't say nothing about him. I say, okay, so what are you gonna do? Like, how are you feeling about being with a person who feels something like that or who would say something like that? And she's just like, well, I just, I'm like, Look, if he okay with you being nine months pregnant, walking a dog, and you okay being with him, I s- if you're not going to break up with him or stop having his kids, then it's really you're wasting your time on earth. Like, make a decision about it. Because you, you, it, it, like, you are the really best do. friend to have, Sandra. You are the best Swear friend to have. God. And people won't appreciate that type of stuff because a, a lot of people, I, I, I want to say women because that's what I relate to the most. But a lot of women want them cheerleaders. They want them cheerleaders to back them up when they say that crazy stuff and be like, girl, when they call you, they And they I wouldn't say it's like, a yeah, gender him, girl, specific thing. Like, like I wouldn't, be a, I wouldn't be, say it's a gender young, specific man. thing. I have That's eight about brothers. Being and all my, and most of my well. best friends. But it's, it's not about that. It's about challenging. Like, people be mad. People be big mad. They go off and then mm-hmm. they calm down. But I understand that I respect that shit. One of my closest friends, we literally been talking every day, couple times a day for like 13 years. She called me and was she sent me a text message and was like, I think we need a break. I didn't even know we had problems. I had just I just flew to Baltimore to see her. A couple days later, she told me we need a break. When I tell you I dropped my phone while I was in the studio and just felt like it just felt like she had just died or something. I was I had to, they literally was like, you got to get out the studio, G. You got to leave. I literally said, okay. All right. Months later, we talking and she just was like, yo, nonchalant response. I said, that's what you took it to mean. I respect you so much and I want you to be happy so much that if your happiness is without me being in your life, I respect that shit. And it made me happy that you were being honest about how you felt 
I was heartbroken because I didn't know that you was unhappy. I could have been let you be happy months ago or however long you've been feeling this way. People really love to say that they respect people until it's like you people doing shit that you frown upon, doing drugs. Literally, this person, it makes them happy. So if this is what the fuck they want to do, not saying that I want them to do it because it's going to shorten their life or their life quality or it makes me worry. But that's my selfish shit. People really have to be extreme to a point that they have to really respect what people have to say, really respect what people want to do and not just say it casually mm. like give you the space to be you. stop fucking judging people. You don't have no you. Don't, it's not your space. It's not your place to judge people, to say, I needed to fix myself. Fuck you talking about fix myself. No, I worked on something for 32 years and I finally got it right. I'm celebrating. Fuck that something was wrong with me this whole time. No, this nigga was a hoe. Now he want to get married. It's mm, He didn't gave all his best years to these hoes. No, he was trying shit out. And now he's sure celebrate him shut the fuck up that's it like i i'm and i'll be real patient like i'll be real patient listening to people talk but even as soon as somebody say like when people say this about me i don't even notice when people saying shit about me i don't notice when people subbing me i don't notice when somebody i don't notice that shit like i be living in my own little bubble That shit dumb. Like, oh, you smoke too much. Oh, you drink too much. Oh, you this. Yeah, I mean. That shit judgmental. It's judgmental as fuck. And every time somebody say something, we don't know how much judgmentalness we have in ourselves because now we're over something. Yeah, which contributes to your mental health overall. Yes, sir. People just at home now. The whole world has slowed down. So people can't hide in the spaces that they used to thrive in and hiding that's what's wrong the world has gotten fucking quiet and now you can hear your own thoughts and how unhappy you are and how this ain't what you thought your grown-up life was gonna be Mm -hmm. and it's sad and you see how far behind you are you see Mm -hmm. how low your credit score is you see how much money you wasted you see how much sleep you ain't got you see how you ain't made you ain't kept no promises to yourself so, so the mental how, health is that people said that they not who they said that they were. So how mm-hmm. is uh so um I got I got Will and uh I know you Mary, right? Mm-hmm. How is like being the, the, the COVID stuff going on? Like I know it's a big difference in my household with the COVID. My wife's at home more, you know, um uh, like it, it, it does the dynamic change things? Did you have to adjust your mental for this, or is it just like moving, moving the same? And, and yeah. the question to everybody else. Yeah, man, we I kind of went through like some certain uh, certain swaps, like like I'm at home more, mm-hmm. um, and like my wife gone more, so like that's different. So like just adjusting with that and being around the kids more is already an adjustment, and being more responsible for the kids. So, yeah, you do have to, man. It's challenging. You know what I'm saying? And um, what I do to balance it, like I was saying earlier on the podcast, is more like I try to stay active, like hooping and doing certain things that take my mind into a different place. I'm always going to hold myself accountable and do the things I got to do and make like a checklist with it. You know what I'm saying? That way, logically, I know I'm holding myself accountable and not just relying on the emotional. You know what I'm saying? Having like something to fall back on. But... Yeah, man. Even with the uh, wife, you got to have certain conversations and you all both got to both position certain things in a certain way to make it work, because that's what it's ultimately about at the end. It's about making it work, bro. So I I definitely understand where you're coming from. And I do agree with your your question. I did have to make some adjustments and I'm still making them. Yeah. Well, you can answer that question. COVID didn't really have an effect on me. As far as <laughs> mental health, I stay alone. So <laughs> it could have I mean, it's just the same old shit. But at the same time, same old shit. I mean, I think it kind of affected everybody because you know, uh, even though you stay alone, like, like I'm no, <laughs> I don't know if this relates, but when I was staying alone, I was single. Uh, it was things going around in my neighborhood 
that didn't allow women to want to visit me because it was like a lot of shooting and stuff like that. So it was like, oh, I'm not coming over there. And I'm like, mm-hmm. what you mean, man? They 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 shooting women over there. Mm-hmm. I'm like, man, come on, you good? And they like, nah. So and that's kind of like, I'm like, God damn. And I'm thinking in my head, like, do I need to move? Or, or you know what I'm saying? Like, I, mm-hmm. or, or what, what I just do, you know what I'm saying? Nah, go get, get motherfucker, go get a hotel. You know what I'm saying? Take it to a, <laughs> like, it was a lot of stuff going in my head. So right. I know you being single, like, and I know a lot of people are like on that, on that health tip now. Like, oh, nah, you know, like the dating scene is probably a lot different. I know um, I haven't experienced it because I'm married, but I, I'm, I'm imagining that the dating scene is, is like, I, I, how do you approach women these days? Like, you can't really, like, um, ain't no more one-night stands probably. You know what I'm saying? Like, but uh, I just don't know. Like, how is it going on? H- how you doing it? No, the thing the thing is, bro, it's, it's what I say about the COVID and mental health thing. Like we were saying earlier, it's, it's, it's most, it's, it, you you getting exposed now. So now it's more about self-reflection. And that don't always that don't always pertain to going at the women. It's because you're single don't mean you're going at the women on just on the regular. Because mm-hmm. in order to go out to women, you need to have your shit together. You need to have your your that's what I'm talking about with self account. You need to have your own shit together. And to have your own mental health right to approach women, you know what I'm saying? If you ain't right, that shit gonna be off. So when you say when I went with me being single and Dealing with this on, like, uh, on alone shit, living alone, it's just more about me just getting diving into myself and seeing how I can make myself better, so that, as you say, when motherfuckers do want to date and all type of shit, you know what I'm saying, that you can present your best possible self. Sometimes you go into your own self, and that's what I'm. That's what I've been on. What's good? So, so did this? So did this COVID make you start self reflecting on things? Or were you doing this before the COVID? Because I know when I was single, I wasn't thinking about if I was right or not. I was just dating women and trying to get some. I didn't care how I was coming at them. I didn't mm-hmm. care if I had my shit together or none of that. So, like, the, did the COVID make you start thinking, like, man, let me get my stuff together so I can get the women that I need to get? Because women are starting to be more uh, cautious about things. So now let me get my shit together. Or was you doing this before COVID? Man, they got this show. They mean that mean that they been like COVID. this. They been it's, like this. They got a whole show about thinking. That's what I said. It was way. It was way. It was way before okay. COVID, man. Like I said, I'm a big accountability guy, man. It's kinda, okay. Which 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 leads. I mean, which has some kind of something to do with the, with mental health. If you, if you take it that way, but it's kind of like I don't want to hit a. If you're not ready to hit a message, then you can't get the help. So it's still on you to be, it's still on you at the end of the day. And that's why I was, that's how I was taking. That's how we started in the first place. It's still on you at the end of the day. You feel like you're by yourself. Uh, that's your question. Shit, you better, kinda... you better, you better than me then when I was single. Cause I didn't care. I thought I was supposed to get the, the best chick in the world and I didn't have shit. <laughs> yeah, man. I was like, what? <laughs> I wasn't coming with nothing. And I was like, what she this? I wasn't coming with nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, but through experience, you feel best, you, you realize you realize this shit, that shit don't work that way, man. The things that you expect from a woman, you need to have you need to have yourself. Yeah. Or whatnot. What I she has on these what she, what she has shouldn't even matter. You know what I'm saying? Like if you if that's how you, if that's if that's what you expect, that's what you should have. And mm-hmm. when you ain't in that space, you don't need to be dating. You know what I'm saying? Like, real talk. What, what are you dating for? Like, if you're dating, I believe in teamwork. So it's like both of us can't not have a car, like, or both of us can't, you know what I'm saying? Like, because of the type of life I'm trying to build, it's like certain things, like one of us gotta know about money, one of us gotta know how to cook. One of us, like, so to me, it's not always about um. I mean, because sometimes you could see somebody with the money, but they don't have the support that they need. So, you know what I'm saying? My pep talks, my brain might get me someplace further than, you know, that I don't have financially. So some things outweigh other things. Yep. You're right. Because one, one, if one, well, one person don't have, the other person needs to have. And then y'all build on each other and y'all teach each other these things. Like, I Come wasn't on. financially stable when I got my wife. And I saw how she managed money and I saw how she handled her business. And that motivated yep. me to do the same thing she did. Cause I don't never want to be the 
the weak link in the fucking I'm glad you said motivated. That's just, mm-hmm. that's just dead. I, I don't want nobody looking at me like, oh man, your wife killing him. Look at you. I, I never want to be that person. So I had to step my game up. You know what I'm saying? I I won't look like the Rudy Poop. True. But how about you not come to the table with no weak links? Right? You know what I'm saying? It's like, but you, 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 well, you, someone always gonna be the strongest in something. You, I mean, it's rare that you go meet a person and y'all equal in every damn thing. I mean, it just sounds like that Kelvin just got like his minimums for himself and as an adult. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, because every time somebody ever say, like, man, well, I ain't had this and this and that, and his standard in his world. All he ever talk about is like, man, you gotta have money, man, you gotta have a place, man, you have to have these set things and 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 like these things are set. So for him, that's not an option. But then to somebody else, it's like, man, I'm gonna make sure I look good. I'm gonna make sure my collection up. I'm gonna make sure I mm-hmm. look like I'm ready for a relationship. So I just think about like, what do you think being ready is? Because I feel like the pandemic has all of my friends that's been in relationships and all of my friends that was just like all busy, everybody was working and stuff. This was my first time actually seeing my friends free. Like one of my friends travel and go wherever he want to go. And this was his first time actually being able to have people come visit or say, I'm, I'm popping out on a Wednesday. I'm going to stay until I feel like it. Yeah, like, they me, I feel they like it freed some people. Some people, it forced them to be more creative and forced them to like have to do what their purpose is like. But then I feel like internally, this kind of like we didn't got in some brawls, like physical. It's been crazy fights at my mom's house, like when the siblings is at the crib and like it's been really hard. But, you know, I'm like, I'm not going to be fighting no niggas. Right. Whole Mm -hmm. time when you take judgment out of the situation, I see my brothers in a different situation, not working or you know, have a family or this, this, and that. And all I took it was, is this don't got nothing to do with you. This is the way they're dealing with being trapped in a fucking box. And all I was, you know, of course, you got to have reality, which is I'm finna move, you know what I'm saying? Or I'm finna get the fuck about the way, or I'm about to leave for a couple months to be safe or whatever, or I don't want to have these arguments no more. But at the same time, again, it's not about judgment. It's about understanding what a person is and still saying, fuck that shit. I get where you at, but you don't take it personally. You're not offended. You're not thinking that this has anything to do with you. You just be like, this was an event that happened. I didn't like it. This shit fucking sucked. And moving forward, if this is what it took for everybody to really say how they always felt, if so, if we needed a fight to happen and then this was the biggest fight we ever had, but then tomorrow, now that shit not in my brother no more, or now that shit not in my mom no more, or now, you know what I'm saying? It creates an opportunity for people to talk about what they want to say. I feel like you can't ask for things and then get mad when it all fall apart because sometimes the shit that you want ain't what you got you gotta break that shit the fuck up and reroute that shit so like i think that right now with COVID, a lot of people are saying they want to be millionaires but they see that they're not good with money and they ain't got nothing saved and it's if they stop working they ain't got they they gonna be ass out a lot of people out here stunting spending money on shit and they see that they can't take care of their kids you know what i'm saying like COVID came and shut shit down. Everybody kept saying three months from it, now, or man, I got unemployment. COVID got has this definitely, COVID has definitely weeded out the weak, and the strong has, is definitely prevailing. Because I'm telling you right now, I've made the most money I have ever made during COVID. And but I've I feel been, like even saying weak or strong is a little judgmental because well, it's just like people just ain't where you at with it. You know what I'm saying? Well, weak as in far as, um financial um know how you know what i'm saying know how to get money know how to maneuver because every in the I, world, will, I, I don't agree have, with the weak or the, or the strong statement however i do get what you're saying but i would prefer to say the hustlers are thriving right now like i would rather just just skip it all over to right okay the people the, the, who are made for this environment are thriving because as you can see it, it, a lot of things a lot of tragedies has happened in the world right a lot of things that's 
um, not even just the disease, but like the stock market, somebody having a stock market and people have to readjust their way of thinking, their way of making money or whatever might happen. And I think that the, the, this COVID, um, it, it messed up a lot of people. The, the, like you said, that's the right word that you use, the hustlers. A hustler go make money no matter what the environment is. No matter who, who if it's white, black, poor, rich, no matter what the economy is going through, you're, a hustler is going to make money. They're going to, uh, they're, they're versatile enough to make money in all types of aspects, right? And I think the people that was um not very well versed in money, like they probably had a certain skill, but money wasn't the skill. Like people that, that that's well versed in money, they're still making money. Because they understand money and, and they people, understand where it comes some from. People didn't know that they did, some people didn't know that they was well versed in money and they're evolving into yeah, somebody yeah. new. And, and entrepreneurs are starting to see the importance of people who don't want to get up and do that shit because you can have a building. They always say if you build it, they will come. But you also need people who will run your building who mm -hmm. will sweep the floor, who will run the lights. So to me, it's not always about building big ass things because everybody, if everybody got a hotel, who gonna come sleep in mine? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like we got, we got to trade stuff. So it's like, if I build things, I need somebody who has the container. I need somebody who drive the trucks. I need somebody who does this. So it's like, everybody can still stay in their lane. People mm -hmm. who sitting at home eating up their unemployment, I need you to come work for me. I see them people. I see them people traveling, doing all these trips, stunting on Facebook, doing all that. And I say they're not making money; they're spending money. Because if you're getting this money, but some people ain't never had the money. Yeah. Before yeah. COVID, I never had the bread to do with all of the shit that I was investing in. Mm -hmm. I wasn't spending my money frivolously. I never had the money to travel. Ever. I had never taken a vacation before. Like, so I use COVID because I was trying, like, I use it as an opportunity. Okay, if I'm going to go to New York, I got to record. If I am going to go see my friend, I'm bringing two suitcases and I'm going to work while I'm there. However, again, we were not made to just work and fucking die. So I do think that it's, it's important it's to use life. this opportunity to stack your money. But however, two, two, three thousand dollars a month ain't really living. People making that at they nine to fives. So COVID ain't really changing, ain't giving people ten thousand dollars a month. It ain't giving people thirty thousand dollars a month to really change what they fucking with. You know what I'm saying? But it did free up some of their time so that they can live. I'm not talking about making money. I'm talking about the government. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about unemployment. I'm not talking about the scammers. I'm talking about actually what you're getting allotted every single month. So to me, if you're getting 20 racks a month or whatever like that, it's just kind of like, OK, how many times before have you had money and you didn't invest it? It's the same thing. So to me, I'm not looking at COVID as I've had racks. I've had five stacks under my pillow as emergency money. I've had this or that. So to me, I'm just looking at this new opportunity like, damn, I ain't have to work so hard for this one, though. So I'm using it as an opportunity to invest in myself better, but I'm not, I'm not just to really fucking who using this time to really live. It's some people who ain't never really bought themselves that believe that they really, really want it. Who ain't never really bought the car or ate the food that they really wanted and had crab every fucking day. And I feel like as a human being, I'm not talking about the business side of it. The human being side of it is that if I had a child, I would want my child to say that they did what the fuck they wanted to do. I woke up and I ate crab because that's all I wanted. I woke up and ate pineapples every day because that's all I wanted. And I can't judge it and say that shit dumb. I'm going to say, did it make you happy? Because when my little brothers was little, they used to pick up dirty ass, nasty M&Ms up off the floor and, be, and try to give it to me. And I used to be like, why the fuck do these kids keep doing that? And then we had a dog that would bring us dead birds all the time. I said, oh, these are their presents. From their, pers from their perspective, they're bringing us treasures. But that's 
that goes to the culture that we live in, right? Because I grew up poor, right? I grew up poor. I grew up with, with not. Do, I'm pretty sure we all probably grew up poor, you know, because that's just the culture that us black people grew up in. We all grew up poor. I don't think mm-hmm. uh, a lot of black people didn't grow up rich. They wasn't born into money. So what I'm saying is I grew up poor. I wasn't allowed to do a lot of things because I didn't just have the money to do it. But then as you get older, of course, you're going to go out and you start doing the things that you want to do because you start making money. Don't don't even matter if you're working at a job that's making like $10 an hour and you can afford a $300 vacation. You're doing all the things you want to do, right? You're, 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 you're getting money that you never had before. You're living frivolously. You're, you're going on vacations. You're buying cars that you can't afford. You're buying clothes. You're buying shoes. This and that, right? So at some point, when are you going to say, I, I, let me stop doing the things that I want to do and start doing the things I need to do. So right now, doing the COVID, I've already done the things that I want to do. I've traveled. I've done this. I've spent money on cars. I've got money. I've, I've been in debt. I've been getting parking tickets because I'm parking outside the club. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I just was doing things. Like, like I've just been doing it, right? So now with COVID hits, now I see the other group of people in the same age group, same. Who ain't never uh, did it before. The same community. Now they're traveling uh, Miami, Atlanta, everywhere, right? I'm looking, and I'm looking at them. I could not judge them and say, these motherfuckers stunt. You did, though. I can just say, I can just say oh, no, it's their time to stunt. I did my stunt. That's how you started. Stunt. That's why I said what I said. Everybody has a, everybody has a time in life where they do something things and do childish things or live recklessly and or whatever right so but it takes you maturity COVID, and experience that make you say damn yeah. i like that i don't want it to stop no more let me do and something more permanent different points of life. <laughs> like, like i can't look at i will look like we lost darwin Hopefully you come back. <laughs> survival of the fittest. And it's so funny because Darwinism is about survival of the fucking fittest. <laughs> I am the last one. I am the about. last one. But right, yeah. Right. I, don't know I know y'all we... like, we gotta go. This is the longest episode ever. Nah, we appreciate nah, we appreciate it. I'm just gonna say, we appreciate all the love, support, you know what right. I'm saying? The yeah, fact that the engagement, that's, uh, that's really what this is all about. You know? And um, on some real shit though. Sure, all we can do is all you all we can do is listen as you add to as, as you add to conversation. What's good? Y'all know that we've been the same way our whole life, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like like mother was like romance and shit. Like we've been talking like man, growing this and growing that. That's why I don't believe in judging people about what happened because it's like whatever happened before now got you to be this person that I say mm-hmm. that I love, that I say that I want in my life, that I say I wanted to learn something from, right? So it's like I've been the same way. You said since I was 15, right? Mm-hmm. I've been in the same way. Right. And it's just like people just didn't notice it or people just didn't find it useful to them. Right. But now that people starting to get older, it's my time to shine. It's the thinker's time to shine. Like, that's why y'all got this show. Because right. it's like, instead of y'all saying something wrong with y'all, y'all like, man, we didn't survive some shit. We some real niggas. We like this. We like that. We like to kick it. We like politics. We like explaining shit. It's like, y'all like, we the best of both worlds. Why don't we have a nap- nightcap? Let's sip and talk, right? So y'all created something for y'all demographic. And I think that that's what the ultimate level of maturity is, is understanding that you don't got to ask permission for shit. You can literally just find your squad and just right. thrive. So mm-hmm. Shout out to y'all Appreciate for it. creating a space for people like y'all. And I think that what people don't understand is that a lot of times when you're trying to find yourself and grow up and therapy this and get a job that and stop this and do this and I'm going to improve myself whole time, you wind up right back where you fucking started. And Mm -hmm. because you realize that you was it the whole time. Right. Never knew. Facts. 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 Very well said. I hope we don't lose you. I know. Will you been like? 
y'all like honestly like we these same people but if it's time to have a good time y'all know how to party in y'all was in choir y'all was on a football team y'all you know what i'm saying like y'all always been these people but our environments made it seem like we had to care, care about living more than thriving so right. now y'all just thriving y'all y'all literally are who y'all used to be and you know before what? you didn't have a choice to put it down that's a clear indicator where your mind at. You said it, you hit it best. Like thriving versus surviving is totally different. At. Like it's the same thing, like you say. Is but when you're in that moment, like I, to me, it's more like a mental switch because like I'll be in that moment where I'm still in survival mode, but like shit, I gotta thrive because that's gonna help me survive even more. It's gonna make it easier for me to kick my feet up and let this money come in. So you know, I definitely understand exactly where you come from. And that's actually within the um within the space of why we created the podcast was to allow people to come on it as a place for people to vocalize what they going through and how they feel about shit. And also if you got a product where you got some shit going on to support, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? That's what it's all about. And forward, that's what we do. Ultimately what? what it is. I know you was out, D. We actually Man, like I'm yeah. totally surprised by how much engagement we got tonight. I love it. I love it. You know what I'm saying? That's, what like, it's about. That's what we we've do. been going at this for like it's almost coming on the year, right? We started like April last year. And so yep. like we wanted we wanted people to come on to the podcast. That was the main thing about the podcast. Like we wanted people to come on, like how y'all came on tonight and engaged with us, where it just ain't just our voice being heard. So it's coming up on a year, and this is the first night. You see what I'm saying? Okay. It's so getting like, fancier yeah. and fancier, though. Like, <laughs> y'all got people who can call in. The connection is there. You can put your mics in. Y'all mm -hmm. got like the comments popping up on the screen now. You got links now. You got a backdrop. Y'all got microphones. Like, half. I'm telling you, like, this the industry uh, yeah, I'm yeah, in. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Kels, I, Kels, that, I see you bringing the personal, man, bro, you, the you personal know, business. I was, I was there at the beginning. I, I was there at the beginning. When Can we go? <laughs> I was there at the beginning when you first was talking about doing it, and I was like, right. I'm all in. And then a lot of just stuff just start happening. Every time right. you get on and post something, I'll be like, I'm going to get on tonight. And then I just come <laughs> on for work. And I just be mentally drained, bro. And right. I just be like, yeah, I be going to sleep and shit. But tonight, I was, I'm, I'm, fu I'm fucked up right now. I ain't gonna lie, I've been drinking and shit. So I right. that's what that's what it's about. We the, the and, fucking and night, night I, saw the link. I saw the link. I was like, yeah, I'm up and energized and shit. I was drinking some shit I ain't never drank before. Eighteen hundred or something. <laughs> some shit. Hey, hey, I know your, your wife poor, appreciates it. Your poor now wife you just about to take your, your ass to sleep. Wife. Your poor wife. We don't know what he gonna do. She don't know right. what she gonna he gonna but, do. Besides, besides <laughs> the unspeakable, you know what I'm saying? But if you gonna take your ass to sleep, you ain't gonna be trying to talk her ear off all night. You ain't got that out already. Oh, well, that be no. her. That be her. I'm gonna talk like this. <laughs> she I'm might be happy. Yourself. She might start giving him a little whatever he drank tonight, like as a night quill. Like, ooh, hey, I get to hey, get to right. talk hey, bro, to him. When I talk, when I talk, when I talk about stuff like this, this shit turn her on. She like to see this. Oh, period. Of me. So you see what's her type. <laughs> she like now this. Now about to be in there with his highlights. Baby, you heard me when I said this. Baby, turn you heard up, me wife. when I dropped that on the baby. You heard what I say. Turn up, oh, wife. Turn up, What's up, Miss Hill? You're welcome. Right, right. Love his emotions and shit. I love it. Hey, right, right, Kevin, right. how you feeling? Come on, wife. Come on, wife. How you feeling? Come on, wife. Come on, What's wife. good? I was like, okay. I was like, okay, we grown and we learned. I didn't even know she was in the back. What's, what's happening? She should have got on the show. She, no, she, she, this on, hey, yeah, she trained. I tell her when to talk and when not to talk. Get the <laughs> fuck out of here, bro. Please. I'm like, hey, hey, you, you, you ain't raise your hand, goddamn it. You ain't <laughs> So, yeah, that's like that's that's exactly what's happening over here. We believe that. we all believe that that's hey wife, hey girl, hey, that's exactly what's happening. Hey, how you doing? She like, let me make sure, let me we let me let me get some shit straight around this month. Yeah, like, really, she, I'm like, real she gonna tell me I could I could eat in the lab. I said I was looking at her like, no, come on, don't eat because it's rude. I'm like. These motherfuckers is drinking and smoking. Man, this is but he did say, he did he say that you put him on and that you want people to know that he was about to sit on here chewing like a horse in people's right. face, like messing up the whole the show. The but he also did say that you'll be putting him on to things and he learned from you. But you see, he ain't eating. It don't matter what. This is what I'm learning about people. It don't matter what they say they ain't going to do. 
<laughs> you gotta look. This nigga ain't on. You know what I'm saying? He doing what you saying? He ain't dropping shit on his shirt and embarrassing y'all. You know? What I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> now he being disrespectful. Exactly. Being disrespectful. You know because he, now always he just got a game power. It's okay, y'all. <laughs> he gotta show out. He could have hey. it. I'm not even a Remember that outside person that you feel like you gotta flex. I'm not even competing. Like I'm just chilling. Right. Like, I, don't even I fucking love you. Win. Bro. I That's love I'm it. I'm at. I just be chilling. I just like chilling. Like I love it. <laughs> right. Hey, I hate to call this night a close, yo, but it's getting late. But we appreciate y'all. If y'all come back on next week, we appreciate y'all too. Um. I guess we gonna have to push our sports to the other show we was talking about. That's all good. We'll get to That's it. That's what we gonna oh, have you, to. Hey, you know, you know, it's, hey, it's you not. tag me and you gonna talk about some sports. I gotta. I've been wanting to talk about some sports for a long time. Hey, D, oh, D, it's going to be in the daytime, man. We actually going to kind of pair the sports in with the sports betting because that's what everybody's mm-hmm. doing now. They betting their money on it. That's yeah, so we're going to talk about that. We're going to kind of tie it in together. So, yeah, we're going to keep Nightcap, try to keep this grown and sexy with the You want to give an advice huh? about oh, what to, oh, what to bet on what to bet on? Of course. Hell, yeah. That's what we do. We're not betting on no sports. Hey, I feel you, D. But hey. we, what we gonna do is incorporate the sports talk too, because that's that's gonna have to generate. Like, if somebody injured, like AD, right? He mm-hmm. out. We gonna talk about the Lakers being out, but also that night if LeBron playing, we gonna tell you the better stats because AD out. You see what I'm saying? They we gonna tell you. We gonna tell you when to bet his stats. Like last, like last night was not a time to bet his damn stats. Hell nah, no, what? Nineteen four, nineteen four and four. We gonna let you know. Like you I, I never I, bet my soul, I called that blowout. I called that blowout. I called it. Here we go. I'm like, not gonna get this shit be just because you top gonna blow his ass out because it's just him, LeBron, and nobody. Yeah, I missed. So the, I'm looking like I, I missed. He's not gonna get his money. You know what I'm and saying? So, rabbit hole into sports. That's, 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 that's what we're gonna be talking about. I understand. I understand. But yeah, we gonna leave it on that note. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all. We'll catch y'all next really week for the nightcap. Really Check out the, against the odds sports uh, sports cast coming tomorrow. I'm definitely gonna drop it tomorrow. We've been working on it. We just been uh, been on the low with it. We ain't been saying shit about it. Yes, 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 yes. So yeah, I'm so proud, yeah. you guys. Bye. Appreciate it. Love y'all. We holler at y'all next week. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to turn it on. I got you. It's gonna.